We're here, we're here in the caverns of time. We got a crazy crowd out here, okay? There's literally hundreds of thousands of people out here. There has not been an event like this. There has not been an event like this since the 1985 Cotton Bowl, okay? So this has been totally insane. We have Horde, we have Alliance coming together to find out who is the greatest duelist, the best World of Warcraft player in the level 40 classic wild beta that's closed and only a certain amount of people can play, mostly streamers. <clears throat> it's amazing. We got a great show planned. Rich Asman, back to you guys. Okay, so Drakova's already moving in. Vinruki comes in, immediately sheeps Drakova. Vinruki's going to be trying to get absolutely to max range and then start opening up on him right there. And here we go. He's right there at 36 yards. I think that's the max range. Starts dropping frost bolts on him. And then immediately Drakova comes out there and he's summoning in the entire menagerie. He's got battle chickens, mithril dragonlings coming at Vinruki super fast. Vinruki is actually going for killing all of those different mobs. Drakova goes ahead and uses freedom to go ahead and try to catch up with Vinruki, but it's not mattering because obviously Vinruki's moving at basically the exact same speed. Drakova pulls back with the pets, and now they're basically going to reset, and then Vinruki goes for another polymorph on Drakova to reset the match again. So this is something that we saw from Vinruki a whole bunch in the last tournament as well, really prioritizing anything that gets summoned, whether that is going to be an item or it is going to be a pet. And then he's just easy, you'd see him even taking a hand off the keyboard there, just making sure the nose is clean because he's digging for the win. He's gonna be able to get that space. He uses that polymorph to his full advantage after dealing with anything that could be thrown at him by and Dracova sitting, and he gets a drink. And Dracova is going in here to make the make the difference here. And then immediately Vinruki comes to polymorph Dracova with only a second or two left. Dracova obviously gets out of that polymorph. There's a number, you see a fire blast go off, two different uh, frost bolts and Dracova is just getting kited. And then we see a repentance go off. Dracova goes for the heal. Vinruki sitting there at 44% mana. This is where Dracova, the rep paladin dream actually could come true. We get an auto attack, a full absorb. Dracova uses freedom, tries to stay on Vinruki, goes for the stun. Vinruki blinks the stun. Dracova throws a grenade. It hits Vinruki. Ooh, big grenade there. That's going to allow him to close that space as well. Let's see if this auto attack, Andy can get some auto attacks and, in. He's going to be able to trade out of the poly, but he instantly gets rooted. Yep, he actually used this trinket right out of the polymorph. He's using everything they can, and Vinruki is going for another reset using a vocation right here. And Dracova is sitting there at half mana. Vinruki is resetting the fight again. Mages are amazing. So one thing that you definitely do want to note about that Evo kit as well, based off of the way that the dual tournament does work, we're not going to see that Evo kit for a little while. It has a very long cooldown. It's a three or a six minute cooldown. It's a very, very long period of time. And then Dracova is getting right up to Vinruki here. He gets him right up against the edge. He gets a critical strike for 399. Vinruki is running away. Oh my Dracova, goodness. oh wow, Vinruki got a really lucky uh, frostbite proc. And then Vinruki went for a, uh, uh, what was it, a first aid, and then Dracova interrupted with repentance. He blocks it, and then he just keeps kiting him. Dracova is very, very low. Vinruki's using a fireball here. Dracova goes for the uh, the bubble, and he's starting to heal himself, and this is going to be another reset. Well, and you look, force look, the trade. You, you basically, force the trade. Exactly. And, and it's very smart by Vinruki there yep. to see the blood in the water and go, okay, I can trade out Ice Block yep. here, and now he gets back to the space game. He throws out yep. the poly, he moves away, and Dracova is going to be on his last leg here. Already relatively depletified on if, mana, and he doesn't have the same reset potential now to actually if be If it doesn't go strikes. right the first time, you polymorph them, and then you go to the second time. And then if it doesn't go right the second time, you do it again. And now we're at about the sixth or the seventh time. Dracova's already used all of his uh, his bubble here. And, uh, oh, he goes for the grenade. Is he going to hit? He hit Vinruki, and then he goes for a holy light heal, heals himself up to full, is closing the distance, and then Vinruki immediately, I believe, spell steals that blessing of freedom. I'm not 100% sure about that. Vinruki again then there. throws the grenade on Dracova. Dracova is out of mana. He uses a, uh, what was that even there? Net, I think nice that was net. a netomatic yep. uh, engineering trinket. And then he's just making the gap there. He can go for the lay on hands if he needs to. He goes ahead and he gets the repentant. He uses the lay on hands and he gets back onto Vinruki. Now at this point, Vinruki, all he needs to do is reset the fight one more time and it's going to be a win. This is right down to the wire. Cold snap, second block. No, not much mana going to be left. And that's why we're going to see this poly come out here 
expect Ben to create that space and potentially go for another drink. But look how calm and collected this guy is. He's it's been in so handle. many of these dual tournaments. I mean, Both hands off the oh, keyboard. No. Sindel for a nice oh, drink. No. He's getting ready for the 4th of July. Oh, no. And then Canadian. he's looking at Dracova with the in combat during the duel. A uh, trinket swap over to the Mark of the Chosen reward from Maradon. If he takes damage, there's a chance for him to gain 25 of each different stat. So he's going to be moving over towards Venruki. Dracova has already used Lay on Hands. He's already used Bubble. The only thing that he has left is Blessing and Protection, and he can't really use that against the Mage. So this is basically all Venruki has to do is repeat the same thing that he's done twice, and he's going to come out ahead. And then there's the grenade nice, that Nate. just narrowly interrupts. Oh, it doesn't interrupt the polymorph, and it allows Venruki to just make a little bit more distance. Was that spell batching? We can't really say. Batching pod. And then, yeah, yeah, there it is. <laughs> there and then we have is. the frost bolts coming out. He hits him with three frost bolts. A, uh, oh, a repentance right there. That is a very, very good repent. One thing you can say about Dracova here is he's absolutely doing an amazing job with the repent. Dr so here, here's the thing with everything that we've seen from Dracova so far. You can see that he's like I, I want to take this first game he's down to use absolutely everything if absolutely. you don't use it you lose it i love that from Dracova, and we could also see him going and working around the resets that Fenruki takes and he goes okay if you're gonna reset i'm going to try to use that to my advantage i'll let you play your game there's not much i can do to stop you i'm, I'm one of the most difficult classes in the game to connect all i really have is my freedom to rely on and we've already seen how well Venruki has moved around that so he is basically saying you take that drink go for it he's obviously in the poly there so he doesn't have much of a decision but this time he can finally close that space mm. he has a little bit more mana another poly is going to come out and now we're going to see those frost bolts also keep in mind then rookie's going to be ranking those spells a lot uh, sometimes he is just going to be prioritizing the slow so it can be a little bit more efficient with his mana and we won't actually see those big beefy frost bolts coming out now we're going to see a nade as well auto attack andy in full and swing he's going into it right there and then he goes for the nut he does the iron grenade and he just narrowly hits ben rookie as he tries to run out Dracova heals himself and Ruki is going in for another Frostbolt and then he gets interrupted with a repent. Dracova goes for the first aid and he goes back on to Ven Ruki. Holy shit, this is going on. Dracova is... He, he's holding his yeah, own. This it, is incredible. Esfan is actually was so right about what we've seen from This Dracova. is incredible. He's used the entire toolkit so well. And, and Ven Ruki, I, I think when you look at, at the field of play right now, and you look at how, what mages are able to do, then right now is in a position, not only is he a deadly player, but I think he has the advantage as far as classes are concerned. And we can see that matched in the chat as well. A double resist. Right. A double resist. Hey, and then finally he gets one off. Dracova goes ahead and he uses the uh, Blessing of Freedom. And then he's just trying to make distance over to Venruki. He goes for the stun. Venruki obviously blinks out of the stun. And Dracova goes the opposite direction, maybe trying to line of sight and reset again. And Venruki's sitting there. Dracova is obviously drinking. Venruki goes for the uh, Frostbolt right there, hits him for 300, hits him with the grenade. Very, very good grenade right there. Second Frostbolt. We're getting a third Frostbolt with the Fire Blast. He's going for the Iron Grenade. Is he going to hit him? He hit Venruki right there. That could have been the end of the match, but Dracova has held it off and then Naruki goes for a rank one frostbolt i believe just to keep dracova a little bit more slowed dracova nice rat. again goes with the repentance with the into the first aid dracova Yo. again staying alive by the skin on his teeth back up to full health and rookie goes for the poly and then he's going to go back up to drink again and see if we can get this right the next time you, you can even see then rookie there like nod when that rep comes out is so yep, well played and, and also dracova really prioritizing trying to get some of that extra resist i can even i can hear quinn right now in his red paladin screaming just, Resist! Yeah. Resist! Well, it, the thing is that it didn't even matter. Like, if he had resisted the uh, the the next two, that would have been really bad. But because he resisted the first two, it didn't break Polly. So it was actually a really good thing for that to happen to him. Yeah, they, uh, yeah. Venruki got lucky with those resists in a way. Yeah. Right? He used up all of his bad RNG there. And then again, Venruki's going for three frost bolts into the iron grenade, into the fourth frost bolt, probably into a fire blast. There's the fire blast right there. Uh, frostbite proc keeping Dracova stunned and then Dracova has his second bubble up and then he immediately goes for two heals and he's trying to get himself healed up as much as possible Venruki makes distance so obviously he can drink Dracova throws the grenade it hits Venruki Dracova again goes for another bandage and Venruki is again making distance so he can drink and reset again so Dracova is again out of outs that's basically something that we've said multiple times. This rep is going to be huge here. This is going to be that window of opportunity. It's almost at the point now for Dracova. He has to close it here. Oh He's going to be able to God, win 500 crit damage. on Ben Ruki. Dracova trinkets right out of it, the volley, and then Ben Ruki gets another one on them. But this is only a short polymorph. It's only 10 seconds. Ben Ruki goes for the first aid. 
making distance on Dracova, and then he sits down to drink. I don't know what's going to happen here. Are we going to go for another polymorph? We are. And then Dracova immediately tries to drink to get a couple of ticks off for that. And then Naruki goes back over there, polymorphs him again, gets in position, starts casting Frost Bolts again. Dracova goes the opposite direction to outrange the Frost Bolts and then drink for a third time. A fat whack from the pally going to crack open this matchup, and all of a sudden, Dracova's very much back in it. It forces Venruki to once again go for a reset, and look at Dracova right now as well. You have to keep in mind, Venruki at this point is going to be getting close to an ice block again. So he does still potentially have those outs. Big grenade, though, once again, Dracova going to come through. Dracova We've already seen how distance, devastating those hits can be. goes for the sheep. And, and I can actually see a bunch of you guys saying that, that yep. you would like to see Sheep maybe have a cooldown or something like that. Uh, you should try out BFA. Yeah, in, in BFA, we're going to see uh, Polly very different there, but not here. This is classic. No changes, baby. That's right. Sheep going to come out. Then Rookie going to move away. And now he's going to start casting some of those Frost Bolts. 143 damage going to come in onto him. That's going to be This could be the end of it. Uh, Dracova has no more outs. And then, oh, wait, he does. Oh, wow. Vinruki blocks the repent and Dracova goes in there to hit him There's right there. Dracova does a clutch furbolg form. I believe that's what it was. Very, very good there. Dracova goes for the heal. Vinruki interrupts it. Dracova, oh my god! Dracova resists the attack while he's doing in for first aid, so he keeps getting healed even more. Dracova's at 10% health. He goes for the heal. Is Vinruki gonna hit him? He didn't quite hit him in time. Oh my god, this is right down to it. Vinruki is basically trying to out damage Dracova's heals, and I'm pretty sure he's not gonna be able to. Oh, Vinruki is out of mana. Yeah. He oomed himself, so he's running away from Dracova. The amount of spatial awareness that he has right here is absolutely incredible. So, so basically what happens in Vinruki's mind, he says, I already used the block. The block is not something that's necessarily defensive for him there. It's an offensive block. Yeah. He knows that he has the evocate, so he goes in and he says, I'm going to start a war of attrition because I have one more out. And basically what happens there is he goes completely oom, he goes for the race, and he doesn't quite win. So he needs to get back. He uses that evocate. Now he's out again, but he's ahead in the race one more time. He gets a full reset this is something that you would see sometimes in arena when you see the full resets actually starting from both sides now this rep is a desperation rep he knows that he needs to move back he knows that he needs to get himself healthy and he has no mana to work with here so Dracova going to move away he's going to start that first aid now then Ruki can close that space with a full bar of mana will he be able to close out this first duel in our tournament and you can already see half health for Dracova ben racing Ruki gets the clock all in right now ben Ruki is all in ben Ruki blinks the stun right there even in Dracova Dracova has almost no health left and Benruki closes it out with the first match going to the mage is able to get off the second one early on and the third one actually came out offensively and now we're going to start open this the only one that's not really going to be available here is going to be on lay on hands on Dracova's True. side so basically Vinruki goes and he does the exact same thing he was doing before he makes max distance with Dracova immediately gets a first resist Dracova starts running towards him Vinruki is going to lose about maybe five yards of his kiting range that he would have had because of the first resist and then polymorph going away Vinruki is obviously kiting Dracova even more and Dracova gets right into that 20 yard range for the repent and then he gets back up to full health and he keeps making his way towards Vinruki now Vinruki is going to be able to get away, so Dracova is slightly out of auto attack range, but in range of obviously Judgment and basically everything else the Red Paladin has access to. And then he's trying to slow Dracova, trying to get Dracova off him, goes for the Fire Blast here. Dracova is obviously rooted there, and Dracova probably interrupts him with a stun and then heals himself up back to full. Vinruki goes for another Frost Bolt. Barely Dracova gets out of it and hits him there. He hits him with a Frost Bolt to follow that up, and then he goes in for the, uh, what is that, Blessing of Freedom? Ooh, Dracova charges net. at him with the net -o Matic Benruki responds by getting into a block and Dracova starts using first aid. And I actually want to say very quickly here, you're seeing how flexible both of these players are. Completely different styles coming out. Much more aggressive opener from Ben Ruki, and also Dracova's able to take advantage of that. Both of these players top notch and Dracova has done. We knew that Ben Ruki was going to look good. Dracova was one of those players that we were like, okay, what are we actually going to see from a Ret Paladin? This was a complete wild card. Yeah. Complete wild card and a complete pleasure to watch so far but Dracova once again going to be stuck in that sheep can you imagine Fifteen dollars a month to just be stuck in sheep all day I think long. Blizzard should refund your sub time at fifteen minute increments every single time that you're uh, you're CC'd. I, you can't I agree. Play the game. I agree. Yeah, absolutely. It's the same as they used to give people free game time whenever the servers would be down. And then obviously Vinruki is running away here. Dracova is trying to meet the distance here with obviously. Oh wow, look at that! He just changing in the blessing of wisdom while Vinruki is obviously making max range to regen as much mana as possible. Goes for the second grenade immediately, healing himself with flash light to maximize his amount of health. And then Vinruki 
Vinruki is still kiting away, but he is pretty close to the edge there. Vinruki might have to go away from a different way. He's going to take a pretty good amount of damage here. This could be kind of bad for Vinruki. It, it could be. And remember the wild card that we actually did see from Jacoba when you talk That's about the right. wild card. That's going to be a very nice route that does come in, that Frost Nova going to slow him up. And then off of that, we're going to see Vinruki take full advantage. But the big thing that we saw from Jacoba is he does go for the reset he has the potential to crit for over 500 damage. We saw a 552 Absolutely. hit come in last time from Jacoba. The reason that we call them auto-attacking Andes is because of how much that can actually the auto do. Auto attacks do good damage. And then Vinruki is pretty low on mana here. Jacoba is just trying to, uh, he's trying to just make the distance here. I don't know how this is going to go. He doesn't want to use bubble. Vinruki also doesn't want to use mana. He wants to try to force this bubble. That's why he was using that uh, that wand, but we'll see if that's going to be able to happen. He's only got 7% mana. Maybe enough. Oh, he doesn't think it's going to be enough. They're both going for a reset and they're going to try things again obviously Drakova probably pretty soon here Vinruki might go for the uh, sheep and there it is and then Vinruki is going to continue healing up obviously and he's got 15 seconds to do that yeah and and also keep in mind you can see Vinruki navigating with his wand a little bit there definitely very proficient with that wand but it's not going to be very important in this matchup because of the reset capabilities i think if you did watch the last tournament we saw a lot of wands getting crossed right you see, see the casters just shooting back and forth at each other having a nice wizard volley but when we have a, a mage in this particular scenario you can throw out the sheep you can get those novas you can get away you can get these drinks Vinruki going to know exactly how to use that Entering out of the polymorph, it's going to be greeted by Frost, slowing down Dracova. Now a nice stun. This, this could close have, it out. This might have to be a block here. Oh! A bubble, I mean. Oh my god. And he immediately gets the repent off. Dracova heals basically up to full, closes the gap on Venruki, goes for those auto attacks, uses Blessing of Freedom, and he's doing a lot of damage here. Venruki, oh, he blinks away without even having to blink out of a stun. Uh, Dracova stuns him. Oh my god. Drakova stuns him with the block. and If he can close is... again, if he can get a rep off yeah, again. It... It, but this is going to be a big okay, evocate here. Goes for an evocate. Uh, and Drakova is actually going to decide to trade out with that evocate. And this is something we've seen from Drakova. He says, okay, you're going to go for a reset. Me too. That's I right. will find time to close. Then Rookie's though not going to be able to get health. Drakova's he... going to be able to close. This blink Whoa. is absolutely massive that here. Drakova just barely came up. This is match point as well, right? Then Rookie can yeah. close this one out. But you see Drakova say, okay, I'm going to trade as well. I'm going to be able to eat a little bit more of your damage. Now, once again, a conjure going to be able to come off. It's going to be nice for them, Ruki, a little bit later on. Jacoba's still going to be sitting in that poly as Ben goes for that reset again, but Jacoba played that very well, and he almost was able to take it down. You can see some follows coming in from Jacoba as well. I do want to mention, if you want to be following Jacoba on stream, we definitely do implore you to do so, because this guy has been playing out of his dome, even when he's sitting in the shape. He looks fantastic in fleece, but we are going to see some nice frost bolts coming out as well. Is the stun going to connect? Oh, and Resist! The, no the grenade was resisted if that wasn't resisted i think ben rookie might have actually and then he blocks to get out of the repent he interrupts the oh my god and then he gets oh man he got hit by that grenade and dracova still gets the heal off ben rookie is just looking for that window and so is dracova between trading resets and then going for those windows this could be basically anyone's game and we're just waiting for somebody to make a mistake or somebody else to get lucky Dude, it's also Jacoba is going for the. He's going for it. He's almost out of mana. This I'm pretty is sure he's hell. getting right. He's getting ready to bubble. This There's is the no ballsiest thing that I. This is the ballsiest thing is. that he's done this since is rolling there it is right there. There's the bubble. I knew it. He bubbled right at the end to bait Vinruki into casting that spell. Jacoba is running away. He's immediately losing first aid, so he can obviously get more mana. Vinruki is getting up to max range, getting his mana back up. Jacoba notices that, and he immediately starts trying to reset too. So now Vinruki has a window that he can obviously fight Dracova in, where he cannot block. This is very, very much been Rookie's game to lose at this point. And I mean, it was pretty much been Rookie's game to lose throughout the entire before the duel even started, right? You yep. can see how favored Mage is, and Dracova just keeps saying. Hell no, I'm not going to lay down and just take it. And he's definitely put Ben Ruki on the ropes before. And we see him finding these opportunities. And he keeps creating these potential opportunities to win. And that's what you have to do if you're going to win a duel. And here's another one. He's going to be able to potentially close that space. But the Nova is just going to be too strong. Ben Ruki, once again, can get away for these resets. He can get out Polymorph. Now everybody in chat gets to take a nice little nap while Ben Ruki gets to take his 4th of July drink all the way in Canada. There it is. And I mean, honestly, he's doing this really, really well. Like, even I think that one thing that really, again, separates good 
players from great players is being able to adapt dynamically whenever things don't necessarily go exactly the way that you wanted them to go, right? So if you have a resist, if you have something happen that's not supposed to happen, if somebody, you know, something weird happens, you have a big crit, you know, you change what you're doing based off of that. And I think exactly. that's really something that we've seen Dracova do a lot and also Vinruki as well. Vinruki, we're basically, what I'm expecting to see right now is Vinruki to go all in at some point whenever he does get full mana. He's obviously trying just to make distance with Dracova and then go all in for a kill because again, Dracova does not have bubble. He does not have lay on hands. And these duels have taken a while, but it hasn't been an hour. So he has pretty much no other outs. Well, it, it, it's a tough situation when, you know, you have a freedom. It, it's one of the best things. Like if, you, if you've ever PVP'd in... Did in you Genoa, see that? He just fire warded the grenade. That's, that's pretty bad. That was big. <laughs> yeah. That I, was big. It, you know, when you when you do look, though, at PVP in Classic WoW, yep. you think about things like Warstar and Gulch. Metas were defined by Paladins actually having that freedom. But when you don't have backup to actually close the space, you're just going to see Ben Ruki time and time again use that blink and be able to keep himself nice and safe. But this is big for Dracova. He's going to and be able to finally close that gap. There's the immediately... nobody. He's going to be able to freedom out of it. And if we don't see a big proc here from Ben Ruki, he we could just see Dracova close it. But once again, he is going to have another blink at his disposal. If this polymorph isn't resisted, then Ruki is going to be safe. Oh, that was close. This is, listen, man, I, I play a warrior. I know what this is like. Dracova, there's no way he's not mad right now. There's no way, man. This is, this is what mages do. And it's what they are best at. They are best at resetting, waiting for that opportunity. And that is all Ben Ruki is doing. He's going to go for the uh, the different cast. He had a resist there. Obviously not good in his favor. Dracova goes for the grenade, hits the grenade, goes for the heal immediately. Ben Ruki blinks out of the grenade. Dracova immediately starts going for the channel on the uh, first aid. Dr oh, wow. Ben Ruki gets a crit for 600. Ooh, this oh, is my it. God. This Dracova is, is very low. And Ben Ruki gets him. Oh. There it is. There it is. There it is right there. there We're going to see Ben Ruki manage to close it out, but Trakova has been absolutely fantastic to watch. You can actually drop a follow for him. You can see everybody absolutely. resetting right now. A everybody on the beta teaming up together to make sure that we can reset the duel. Ben Ruki going to be nice and happy there. Uh, he had plenty of time during that matchup, you know, to throw out the polys. We have one of the most lovely, luscious, hair-flowing interviewers in the entire world to talk to the absolutely jacked vegan of Ben Ruki. Yo, what's up, man? Hey, how's it going? I mean, this was this was a pretty uh, this was a pretty impressive duel. I, oh, oh, you you ran away from me. You wanna you wanna go ahead and run back here? I'm, uh, I'm pretty oh, yeah. immobile. Uh, there you are. Okay, right. so uh, real quick, I mean, what what did you think? What what were you expecting when we first fought Dracova? Uh, so Dracova is a paladin. I think I I dueled against him three or four times, mm -hmm. and every time I dueled him, like I, I thought he was obviously a really impressive player. He knows exactly how the matchup needs to be played. I think a lot of mages would probably end up losing to him, but um, obviously you saw if you just kind of stall out the game and spam, eat, and drink till mana's in your favor, you can win. But I think he played it basically as well as you can. Yeah, I would I would very much agree with that. Dracova is a very good player, and uh, I mean, of course, we, we all know this, right? The level 40 meta is a little bit different, wouldn't you say, than, uh, than at max level, you know, not having cleanse and whatnot. But uh, I think he played that just about as well as you could have possibly played it, and uh, of course, so did you, right? So uh, congratulations, great job on the win, and congratulations on going to the next round. Oh, thank you very much. I look forward to it. All yeah. right, here we go. So obviously, duel is starting. Zero is trying to find Peo, and Peo is just trying to find that opening to open up on Zero and actually get that attack. Zero drops a flare, and then immediately right after that is going to go ahead and use his Night Elf Racial to Shadow Meld. And now Peo is just kind of curious, doesn't really know exactly what's going on. So here. basically, what he's doing is he's staying in stealth so he can enjoy mm -hmm. his sub train. It's a it's a yeah. classic move that you see by Chad. Oh, but, no! oh! And then Zero moves him in immediately, gets Peo out, and then immediately Peo interrupts him with a uh, a gouge and then zero stays on Peo right here Peo is doing a lot of damage to zero zero already at half health Peo is oh my god stunned wait how did he full heal you could actually see as well there from Peo he was saying wow what a good player that zero is yeah. he was saying it very loud he was very hyped up about what a good player that he is a big opener comes out from Peo you know, even though we see zero with with fantastic and Peo finishes out the duel you just can't stop. I mean, like, that was fucking insane. He just popped up. He, he didn't even get the stealth. He didn't even get the opener. He still won him. He still needed him. And I actually do want to bring that up. Look this at that is... damage. <laughs> Look at that rogue damage, man. It's insane. World of Roguecraft is real. We're going to see Zero once again try to get himself in the position to be in that flare, take full advantage of being a night elf, 
and try to prevent the absolute onslaught that Peo can do with a successful opener. Peo so most likely going to go for the grenade around. again. He's expecting to see Zero right on top, but then Zero immediately counters his grenade with a scatter shot, leading that up into a trap, and Zero goes ahead and gets at max range now. What's going to happen? Zero already at probably 36 to 40 yard range, charging up an aim shot. Peo is moving towards him. He hits him, and then let's see how this is going to go. Oh, Peo hits him with a, a blind. Okay. Th th this could be the restart that he needs. Now, one of the big things is when you do look at the potential for the scatter shot, yep. it, it's such a Ooh, huge a play by the hunter. Right there. There's a, a trap reset? right there. And then immediately zeroed hits Peo with a bomb to hopefully uh, make the gap here. Let's see if that's going to happen or not. Peo should. Oh, there's a trap again. So zero is going to be able to reset. And I don't think Peo has used. Uh, he hasn't used Vanish. So I'm pretty sure he might. Actually he has a lot this. of tools. At oh, his and zero goes for another shadow mill that makes it very interesting payo immediately tries to go after him zero hits him with a concussive start sets concussive shot starts kiting him i don't know how this is going to go payo is getting right over to him if payo makes it over to zero this match is completely over and you can see payo is going yeah, to be one thing to watch for his dual department. range he's he's running out of dual range right now He's okay, trying to cut as far as gonna possible. Peo going to be able to close that space. Will we see that explosive damage that's come out from him before? Zero is oh. still going to be relatively Oh, open. and then there's a stun, and then Peo is going to be able to close it out, and then he does right there. Oh, my God. There's a trap. Zero, he feigned death the last hit. Zero is going to make distance again. Peo gets out of the trap right there. He goes to maybe kill. He gouges the pet, so then Zero has to actually attack him right there. He throws another grenade at Peo. The grenade hits Peo. Peo is at very, very low health. Zero is at also lower health. Let's see what's going to happen. If Peo here. connects this, to Zero, he wins, this right? This is it. This is really, really right down to the wire here. And then, oh, oh, Peo, oh, oh my God. That is an almost 400 The pet's going to get he the kills the pet. He's at 36 oh, health. What's going to happen here? Shooting. And then Zero finishes him off that was right down to it okay here we go uh zero drops the flare and uh let's see he's gonna go obviously right into stealth and then we're waiting on peo to do the opener let's see how this is going to go peo is sitting there he's waiting there we don't know what's gonna happen he's deciding what's gonna happen he's sitting there biding his time i don't know what this is gonna be boys i think he might be thinking about doing a chicken let's see so there we go. He goes in there. <gasps> oh, he doesn't get the scatter shot. The and then he gets a scatter shot out there immediately. Peo has the chicken out there. He's opening up on him. Are we gonna get? Are we gonna get the trap off or not? Let's see. Oh, Zero does get the trap, and Peo again. Zero's already got. Or sorry, Peo already has Zero down to like what sixty percent health or something like that. That's obviously not very good. So here we go. Peo's obviously trying to do a little bit of damage to the pet as he's walking his way over towards Zero. And oh wow, Peo's going for. The, he's going for the long strat. So he's actually going to kill the pet. He's killing the pet. Peo's not even a half health. The pet is already dead. Now Zero is in a very very awkward position, and Peo goes for the full heal. This could be really bad. It doesn't. It, this really all depends right now if Peo Zero can it. stay in combat or, I think, or not. I, I think Peo, Peo is obviously it. going in the opposite direction, so he can leave combat. So Zero can't make a, make distance to him. But this the uh, small little like whatever the the bird thing here is keeping him in combat, and uh, he's not able to go into uh, stealth here or not. And then let's see what's going to happen here. He goes for I think the distract, and then Zero is eating up right here. And then Peo just needs to get right over to him. But Zero did an amazing job taking advantage of that heal. I, I think the big thing to note though is Peo should be able to get another opener here. I actually I think he is going. Think to be able that he to might be able to. He's yeah. already going. He's he's dashing over to him right now, and oh, then Zero is probably going to go for the trap right there. He goes for the trap and a second reset. This is not good for Peo because Peo just used his stealth to get over there, and Zero is using his trap time here to heal up and reset. Now, obviously, Peo is going the opposite direction. He's going to stealth, try to get back into stealth to reset the fight. If Peo gets the reset, it's over. But obviously, he wasn't able to. Zero tries to move in a little bit more and then Peo is just running away right now he's getting pretty low health this is not looking good for Peo at all zero is at full health and I think Peo is let's see 23 health 42 damage learned a bunch from chat now it's time to learn a bunch from healing stat what are we actually going to see from a priest in this tournament how will he fare against the rogue instantly he's going to make sure that he is set up with that bubble he's going to have the maximum amount of protection that he can to fight against the opener from the rogue will we actually see hot form have that beautiful opener and be able to take down healing stat instantly and we can actually look at some of these povs right now and There's now everything's healing gonna be stat sitting up. right there he's just waiting for that rogue to pop up he's got his shield on he's got his inner fire on he's got all of his buffs and he is ready to go waiting for that rogue to pop off on him 
and uh, let's see how this is going to go. The rogue opens up with a sap. He's waiting to get back into sheep, and then he saps him again. What's going on here? I'm a little bit confused, but we'll see what happens. Oh, he's waiting for his energy to regen, and here we go. He goes back into stealth, and he opens up with Garrod, hemorrhage, and then he's got crippling poison on him. He immediately fears. Healing Sap tries to fear. He trinkets out of the fear, and then immediately stuns him with a blackout proc into a grenade. Healing Stat, oh, mind controls him Big to reset MC. the match. Oh, my goodness. And look at there how tanky Healing Stat is as well. Like, Healing Stat was so tanky. He just like took that opener on the chin. Oh it was totally God. fine with it. Now he's going to be able to reset the matchup. Will we see Hot Form be able to find stealth again? Uh -oh. And what we basically, I don't think we are going to see uh, it. Combat is going to be is, dropped. You don't get Cloak of Shadows until Burning Crusade. He's right at max he, range. This is not good at all. Hot Form is going towards him right here. Let's see if it's going to happen. Healing Stat is making some damage. Hot Form immediately goes for the blind. He's waiting for Devouring Plate to come off. He's obviously deciding, okay, is it going to be enough time or not? Obviously, it's not. He's going to probably try and wait for one tick and then go back into stealth and go for a sap and then go for a, ooh, I don't know about this. This is going to be uh, interrupted right there. He's and taking he his time. A drink. He, hey, he, you know, he's taking hey, his time. He might actually hey. just be waiting for, for Cloak of Shadows to actually come out now he's finally gonna get the opener okay, but adrian's gonna retaliate go. with the fear and there's the whelpling as well okay. it's gonna be moving in Ooh, how much will we be able to do not get rid of whelpling but you can kill it it's already dead and then he's moving all the way over to healing side right now healing side is at half mana healing side is running away making distance on him with the dots up and then he hot form tries to run away and then healing set hits him with the grenade as he goes away healing set doing as much damage as possible hot form at 20 percent health healing set has complete control over this match hot form is running out for some sort of a self some sort of a reset something he's right against here. the wall and he's Immediately going in there, he tried to shadow meld into a drink. Obviously, the damage is going to break the shadow meld. Healing Sat knew that was going to happen. He waited, and then he reapplied devouring, or sorry, uh, shadow ward pain, and he stunned him with a blackout proc. This is not looking good for Hot Form at all. Th this is when you put the gotchis oh, in the chat because no. Adrian is just having the beefiest amount of damage oh right now. And look how much mana he still has. He still has a thousand He's mana. He's going for the wand. Oh. He's going for the wand. Easy. Easy Woo! win for Adrian. That, that, there it is, boys. And he was able to just shut down pretty much all of the damage that Hot Form was even able to put out in the opener. And now Hot Form is one of those players that also has been just so focused on everything. Oh, he opens up with a cheap shot, a cheap shot, cheap shot, a cheap shot instead of a, a Garrote, and then immediately healing stat fears him out of that resetting basically the entire opener and i think that we're getting a little bit of deja vu healing stat at max range and then he's trying to get away here hot form doesn't know if he should try to reset or not and healing stat has got the dots on him hot form is slowly ticking down he gets the devouring plague and then he just barely i don't think he got that stealth damage off or not and here we go Dude, Adrian is just looking oh, nasty no, right man. now. He is looking nasty. Now we're going to watch a short video of Peo. And, and so the thing is here is that sometimes not only do we have uh, stream snipers, but we also have clip snipers. So, uh, you know, that's the way that it goes. But obviously getting back right here into the match. And obviously we didn't miss much because we already saw it before in the first game. Hot form is running out into max range to hopefully reach that. Shadow Ward Pain already has, what, 10 seconds left on it. There's no way he's going to be able to reset before he's dangerously low on health. Health. healing stat however is very dangerous to go on mana so this is gonna be very curious but he did reapply shadow word pain and i think that we might see a devouring plague come up pretty soon here and that could be the end of the match. we also saw a wand close it last time and this oh, is this adrian is this so is this is this is what that we call absolutely calculated this is a really nice attempt though here for hot form to actually oh, be able to reset uh and we're going to wow. be able to see the sap come out as well so hot form definitely going wow. to be towing the line here but what we see healing stat do the reason he is so okay. low on mana he's able to calculate the fact that he puts out so much pressure that he can potentially get this quick kill against the rogue and just shut down all of the things that he does have at his disposal play to the advantage of not having any of these big resets now hot form he's able to get a little bit of a heal oh, but a big resist gonna come in he, he's still into into that that invisibility though he is still stealth so he still will have that opener that is big for hot form he's gonna be able to get that sap onto healing step but look at what healing step was able to get he was able to get more mana than hot form was able to get health he's gonna get oh, right out with that fear miss. now the shield's gonna be up he Healing stat should be able to close it out here. Oh man, that's what you like to call RNG. And sometimes that's you get what God. Another amazing job that I'm about to do is uh, interview uh, Mr. Healing Stat here. Oh, he's running around. Uh, I lost him. Healing oh, Stat, sorry, can you come sorry. back. Oh, uh, we lost I, I, him for a second. Okay. I don't know how that happened. So, so Mr. Healing Stat, um, what was you? Are you where, where are you at? Did I lose you. I'm here. Hello. Oh, there you are. Oh, okay. There you are. I didn't know. Oh, it's so weird. Uh, it's like almost like I can only see in one direction. Uh, yeah. So, healing stat. How, how did you feel about that matchup? Priest versus Rogue. 
Um, so actually in the level 30 dual tournament, I was defeated by Peo, who was playing Rogue, of course. Um, and so I was really scared. Sorry, they can't, and actually... they can't hear you. Can you get a little closer to the mic, a little bit to your left, please? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Over here? Is that better? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, right. that's good. Okay, good. Uh, yeah, sorry. I, like, as an undead, my throat is a bit coarse, so it, that's why I talk a little bit low. Mm. But, um, the, the Rogue vs. Priest <laughs> matchup was a little bit tough for me, so that's why I, I actually built my entire build around this one matchup, so I'm a little bit concerned uh, going forward because I'm not set up, for example, against mages right. or shamans later on. But uh, against Rogue, I felt pretty confident, and uh, it was pretty it was pretty one-sided, okay. I think. So you, so you went with the strategy of put all your eggs in one basket early on, and then whatever happens, happens later down the road. Yeah, I'm kind of winging it. Okay, we're, we're getting ambushed here, so <laughs> we, we, better, we better get moving. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Aswant. Faces the place, right, warrior versus warrior. Sony already showed just how much damage he's able to get out. Noxa being one of these players that we play with. Okay, zoom, zoom. they trade zoom. charges. They both go into Berserker Stance, and Sony gets the intercept off before Naxa does, and then he immediately summons his dragon. He oh drops my Sony goodness. down, and then Naxa does a dodge. Sony responds by doing an overpower. Naxa is already at below half health. Sony is over half health. Sony went for a grenade. It didn't quite go off. Naxa tries to hit him with the grenade, and Naxa is going down to zero health. Sony pulls out ahead. That was not even close. I don't know why yeah. I said two. Two. Okay, here we go. And they're strong. both running towards each other. They immediately trade charges just as usual. And then they're basically right now, let's see what's going to happen. Then immediately Sony hits him with the, uh, oh my God, with the stun into the grenade and into the improved hamstring. Sony is moving in and out of melee range. Naxa does a dodge. That's not good for him. Sony goes back into battle stance. To, oh my God. And then Naxa is still taking so much damage. He's doing everything that he can. Sony is running away. Naxa might try to go for an intercept, but it's no not way. really going to happen. Naxa goes going down with Sony at half health. When I used to cast over Chuck, mm -hmm. but we're going to have to see if C do is going to be able to do do on stay safe. Oh, well, at least stay safe immediately starting off with a better opener there because he was able to use the uh, what do you call it? Uh, the grenade and actually hit C do there. Stay C do is staying on stay safe right there. Oh my God, that's a big one. Going for the chain lightning and the iron grenade. Right after that, we see the sack on the void walker. Stay safe is probably going to go for a fear. Sidu sees blood. He's going for it. He's doing as much damage as possible. Stay safe has 300 health, 100 health, and he's dead. Sidu closes it out at half health. That is the explosive potential of an elemental shaman. Go. <laughs> Let's get this okay, started. Go. We've go. seen Sidu with absolutely explosive starts. You can see Stay Safe. He's already in a position here where he's a little bit nervous going up against the BlizzCon champion. But this guy is a classic god. The fear will... Oh, nice play there. He's going to try to get a little bit of dancing going on, but Sidu's going to play around that so well. Oh my god. I mean, they dropped the Fire Nova Totem there. Stay safe already at only 900 health. He's trying to just make distance with Sidu, but Sidu is just going for the ranged attacks, and it looks like Stay safe might be out of the game here. And then there we go with the Wind Fury proc to finish it off. Sidu takes the win 2-0, and Stay safe look, look goes at, down into the lower bracket. Holy shit. Dude, look at Chuck's face, too. He's not even happy. He wants more. Well, of course. He, he literally, like, I mean, this, this is... This look, is look at him. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, you know, I did the thing. Can we get five gifted in the chat, bro? E easy, bud. Easy, bud. Easy, bud. Easy. All right, uh, Mr. Do, nice to meet you. What's up, bro? How's, how's it going? Uh, that was obviously a very good performance. How did you feel about the matchup versus a uh, versus a Warlock? I wasn't really sure if it was good or bad. I, I really haven't dueled Warlocks uh, that often. I think I dueled Snuts once a while ago, and he beat me, but it was, like, the first time I played Ellie. Um, so I've, I've kind of learned some stuff, but, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I guess, I guess it was pretty good. It's cold as ice. ice in his yeah, you're, yeah you're, you're looking, you're looking pretty icy there, but, uh, I, I think you're doing all right. I think, uh, so, so how'd you feel about the, uh, the usage of earth shock? Uh, you've got Trevor Toad and Grounding to Totem. You have, uh, you have quite a few different tools to use against the Warlock. Did you, uh, did you feel like you had an advantage there after the fact? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel, like, I feel like if I get hey, here, hey. it's probably my fault. Over here. Um, hey. hey. But, oh, uh, over here. Over here. All right, turn around. Thank you. Nope. Okay. Well, all right, you, you look you look a little bit uh, you look a little bit scatterbrained right now. So uh, I think I'm gonna let you oh, go, boy. Chuck. Thank you so much, uh, and we'll uh, we'll talk to you later. GGS. Thanks. <laughs> but 
it seems pretty uh, pretty obvious that might be the case. Guys, keep in okay, mind the rules go. always going to be very important there. You, you got a long look at those, so you know everything to expect inside of this matchup as we started off. Zico's going to go for that polymorph. Rep, though, going to be connected onto Zico instantly. We're going to see none other than Absurge try to get that auto attack damage out. He's finally going to be caught into the sheep. That's going to buy Zico a nice amount of time. He's Zico just going to in. This is an aggressive Black Wizard. Okay, here we go. Immediately getting them down to half health, hitting them with the uh, the proc for the root there. Absurge getting the, uh, what is that? The uh, Blessing of Freedom. I don't know how this is going to go. Absurge has a lot of catching up to do. It looks like he's going to have to bubble right here. And let's see what's going to happen. He goes for the lay on hands immediately. And then Zico just sheeps him right after that. Completely denies the lay on hands and uses it as an opportunity to completely reset. That is not good at all. So lay on hands, it's probably the only time that we're going to see it inside yeah. of this matchup. He's going to go ahead and use it. But Z Zico is basically in a situation where he is. Okay, yeah, sure. To I'm going to use time. my tools to actually, I'm going <laughs> to use my tools to actually sit back and reset. He's going to get some mana oh, he here. Drops but we fireball. saw him play so aggressive. Yeah, the fireball is going to be ticking damage. now. This guy's just popping off right here. Absurge already at pumping. almost half health. Now, Absurge still does have bubble, so that is one thing that he still has. But uh, Zico is at full mana. I mean, this is obviously not good for him. Zico immediately blocks out of the repent. This is an aggressive play. This is extremely aggressive. Zico just, just so much confidence right here. Absurge is at 25 health, and now he's at zero. Okay, there we go. All right, here we go. Let's do it. Okay, Absurge is moving towards Black Wizard and immediately gets rooted there. And then uh, let's see. It looks like Zico is going to try. Oh, oh, wow. He just blinked right away out of that stun. And then he goes for the interrupt. And then he, Absurge interrupts the uh, the Polymorph with the repent. Okay, here we go. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, this is a very They're interesting way off. to start this off. Yeah, these guys going absolutely ham. Now caught in the yep. sheep is going to be Absurge. Zico's got a full tank of mana, 72% mana here. He's going to go down for a drink. He's going to want to make sure it's a 100% so oh, he can dude, just He's getting out. ready just so he can pop off. Hits him with a rank one Frostbolt. Okay, with the resist there. That's obviously not very good at all for Zico. He knows that's good. That's not good. So obviously, what does he do? He resets again. He polymorphs again. Okay, and there we go. And he's just fighting him right in range. He's not even worried about getting max range. He's actually going and being as offensive as possible, just like what we saw at the beginning. He goes for the, uh, obviously, a, what do you call it? Uh, I, I, on, oh. What were you saying? What were you saying? Absolutely deleted. He's going to tear him apart oh. like soft bread. Zico's going to be able to take this one. Oh. You, you, you do need to actually look out here. You do need to look out here. You can actually okay. see it. From, you, you can see it from, from those they're, they're prowling around there. You got those pussy cats. And we all know that if you do get too close to the pussy can completely ruin World of Warcraft. Oh. It, it could really ruin the duel. So you do want to be staying away from those guys uh, when we are competing on this terrain. Yes, uh, we're here. We're here with Zico. Uh, Mr. Zico, how, how do you feel about that duel? Uh, I feel pretty good. I mean, it, it was sad that it, you know, got a little bit dragged on because of mm -hmm. griefing, but, mm -hmm. you know, Absurge is a great player, you know, he played the matchup, you know, perfectly, and, uh, yeah, it was fun. Nice. Can, can you get a little bit to your left? Uh, I can't I can't hear you quite well. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, much is, better, is much better. Okay. Yeah, yeah, much better, much better. So, uh, uh, I gotta say, that's fun. How does it feel having the, the best hair on Twitch? Hey, good? second best. Second best to you. Oh. Uh, you're too, you're too kind, but I shaved, so you know now you're now you're fresh. No, it's still good. It's still good. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. No, I'm just really nice. I do have the best hair on. Twitch. Can you tell him I miss him? <laughs> uh, I miss I miss you too, Rich. So, oh, wait, how, how did you feel about the the Paladin Mage matchup? We saw one before. We saw one with Venruki and Dracova. <laughs> how did you feel about uh, playing against Absurge? Was it a uh, was it the sort of thing where was it about what you expected or, or no? Um, no, I think it was easy. Really. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> honestly, against threats, it's all about the the freedom, you know. As you know yourself, as fun being, mm -hmm. you know, one of the the Do leading like rats that. here on the beta. Um, and in yeah, real life, it's just, it, yeah, and in real life, of course. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's just all about the freedom, you know. So if True. you if you True. if you get a novo and they don't have freedom, you're you're chilling. That's right, and that's what we're about, man. We're about freedom here, and uh, that's why we're doing this here on this here eve of July fourth. So. We're big on freedom. We're going to have freedom tomorrow. We're going to have freedom August 27th. 
whenever we have we, freedom uh, every day because we got this freedom is every day. hell yeah brother that's what i like hell to hear. yeah brother all right back to you guys and, and really starting to see what uh, what this player can do okay, here we go and then they're immediately starting off all seeing eye just goes moves up right directly to him and he keeps him in the roof with the frostbolt and then oh wow and he's immediately i did he just ice block or trap out of that oh my god jelly beans is already at 39 percent health 26% health. All seeing eye is just deleting jelly beans. This is insane. And then jelly beans get slightly healed up. And then is all seeing eye going to be able to finish it off with an arcane explosion or maybe a cone of cold? And he immediately pulls it off. I actually thought all seeing eye was a warlock. I was wondering why there weren't any dots there, but it turns out that he's a fucking mage. Dude, jelly beans. Look bro. at that, dude. Jelly beans, bro. Woo! Let's make this happen. Here we go. And then they immediately start off all seeing eye. He's immediately kiting him there. Jelly beans is keeping him at max range. He's using Viper Sting to run all seeing eye out of mana. And he got rooted by all seeing eye with the uh, the trinket, the shrink way as well with the uh, attack power reduction. And then here we go. All seeing eye coming right back at him, hitting him there with the cone of cold. And then, okay, here we go. He got out of the, oh, it's a trap. Okay, that's good. And he immediately got out of the trap rooted him again with that and they stayed within his dead zone there he trinket or sorry he blinked over inside of his dead zone as well remember look at all seeing eye with this dead zone thing this is incredible and he's just finishing him off with an arcane explosion holy that shit. dead zone management was insane was you can fucking, see right now on jelly bean's stream it that said most insane. recent d i think we just saw a very big recent You're d and it was coming in eye. from all seeing and i let's do it all right next duel is going to be up against bean against snuts hunter versus warlock he, he's been so then farming. they immediately open up bean opens up right there and then he tries to trap him but bean accidentally traps the pet that's not good at all snuts just starts putting up dots on him right there he's probably going to try to fear the pet but maybe not he just puts a curse of agony on him and then he's actually dotting up the pet already and then bean is just damaging down snuts like it's nobody's business oh my god bean is popping off this is snuts what i just, heard this might be this might not be over oh my god look at this okay so snuts is definitely going to be able to hold on uh which, uh, which we'll is fantastic he's out for, of for, for now he's but... got the fear exactly and then he oh he stopped the fear did he stop the fear of counter uh, counter shot be bean has so much at his disposal whoa uh oh uh oh that is that trap that trap that trap okay here that we go was, I... and then he's moving away right there he's summoning the void walker he immediately got the summon off so that's going to give him a second trap he moved out of range of fear so obviously he's going to have to get in range there now really all bean needs to do is auto attack snuts and i think that he might win but snuts also has a second uh he has a second absorb and snuts is just sitting on it he's actually letting that pet do as much damage as possible this is going to be right down the wire he uses the absorb snuts is basically just finishing it off he's going to go for another trap to maybe trap and move out the absorb this is right down the wire Th this bean is where bean should win he uh, should be okay, able to okay. eat here while he's in the trap and then instantly kill him when he does get out because now his pet can close the space get a little bit of damage and snuts is completely tapped on mana and this he is the goes reason for that the stun so and then snuts is going for the wand this is right down to it i think snuts is actually gonna oh! win. snuts won oh my <laughs> what god the what the fuck this is a no bean wood. No, bean one. Bean, 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 bean one. 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 Bean this is already underway. Did they, do they just want to keep playing this one out? Yeah, I mean, we I, can I just. Yes, I don't know. I mean, yeah, let's just play this one. Out. They'll play it out. They'll play it out. Let's go. They <laughs> want it. They want it. They're ready for it. And already yeah. we can see it's down to the wire again. Then, Snuts is going to be Snuts. so low on health. We're going to see Bean try to get in, close that and space. Then, He's going to be able to get the trap. Oh my god. Um, this is again right down the wire. I don't know what's gonna but happen. But look how here. calculated it is by Bean. This is why people were talking up Bean. Oh he knows exactly God. when he's gonna feign the feign yeah, death, get him with the trap, close. Snuts already out of mana again. He's got this nothing is, to work with. He's Bean gonna, he's gotta, has he's resources. Wand him. He, he's wanding Bean to death. Basically, Snuts is just hoping Sack that off. absorb shield is big enough, and I don't think it is. Bean it's won not. again. Uh, all right, Bean. Uh, nice to meet you, sir. Nice to meet you. Thanks. Can you can you please uh, look at me, please? Please, I'm oh, the yep. cameras this way. Thank hello, you. Hello. Yeah, nice to meet you, sir. Uh, how, how'd you feel about dueling Snutsy? How'd you feel about the uh, the Warlock Hunter matchup? You know, I was pretty inexperienced versus Warlock. Only dueled him like once or twice, but I knew my general plan is to pretty much trap him, kill his pet, force the sack early, you know, viper sting him, um very him, good. and just dampen him. Very good. So very methodical approach. Uh, so, so did you use a similar strategy when you're fighting mages or no? Oh, well, I am doing a mage next round, so I'm not going to reveal that information. Mm. You guys will have to wait and see. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. <laughs> no. Stay Thank tuned. You, Mr. Bean, we'll, we'll talk to you later. Thank you. Zero. Okay, here we go, guys. Let's do it. 
Zero just challenged you to a duel. Let's go. Where is Zero's pet? Uh, he's probably stealth. Oh, and then Zero immediately starts at the beginning with a shadow meld, and he scatter shots Venruki with the uh, the Viper Sting, so it doesn't immediately break on damage. Then go for dead zone. Oh, he's going for dead zone right there. He hit the Kona Cold. He drops the Iron Grenade, and then Zero got out he's of it. That is go for impressive. The pet. And then he's just immediately just going directly after him. Venruki is just a wild animal. He's going for blood. Zero is moving away as much as possible. Venruki is trying to cast on him. Hits him with a frost. Uh, sorry, a fire blast keeping him slowed and then oh my god okay there's the the root there with the trap and then Venruki is just keeping him right there directly in place Venruki goes back to the dead zone trying to keep in that dead zone staying there zero is pretty low on health but so is Venruki Venruki is going all in here well e e Elliot definitely is a jungle cat with his claws out going absolutely crazy inside of the dead zone but look at what happened he has absolutely no mana can he get the close here he's trying to do it on zero zero now is going We're to go going in with his melee attacks. weapon this is an auto attack Andy duel oh, will no. the one be able to do it the frost nova comes off he's able to get off oh that burst God. of damage he goes into his ice block and just zero like that zero defeated venroki in a duel in a dramatic reversal of fate something i don't think anybody would have expected that is incredible man venroki did use his okay. ice block though there. that was an ice block but did he use a cold snap I don't uh, know he did he not did. use a cold okay snap. here we go actually he wait it might have been a up, wait was it a trap? Oh, did you see that right there he immediately opened up the rank one frostbolt to stop him from going into shadow mode that's very very it's good big. and then he stops right there in the dead zone he stops zeroed he's doing the big one uh oh uh oh uh oh he hits him for 400 zero is stunned he immediately double hit him right there with a frost shock and also a fire blast oh my with goodness, a critical strike this is not looking Look good at this for zero at all. he first aids and then he immediately hits him again and then Vinruki is just oh this is that was a bloodbath. He took all the damage from the cat. He took all that pussy to the face. That it wasn't was, even a problem for him. And then he's absolutely able to around. shred. Look, look, I, I don't even, I don't think Zero was ready for that at all. Look at him. Ben oh, Ruki's wait, they're already ahead. back in game. So immediately, Ben Ruki, wait. That was a trap. Ice no, I think out of the scatter? That, that was either an ice block out of the to... scatter or it was a trap. And but I, I think oh, it looked really, like an ice block. That is yeah. really, really good for Zero. That in the is dead really zone. good for Zero. And then he's right in the dead zone. He hits him with the Kona Cold. Right I don't think it matters after. for Zero. He's rooted. And then he just keeps getting his cast interrupted. He can't really do anything right there. And he immediately gets trapped. That is not good. Zero is going to try to get range from him and try to catch up with this damage. Let's see if it's going to happen. He's just tanking this pet damage time and time again. It's a completely opposite strategy than what we expected from him. But that trap was beautiful. And that does mean that I think we had an ice block to oh, start things off what is this and then he, oh he sheeped the pet and then he blinked forward baiting zeroed and then he's immediately getting in range he rank one frostball only 32 so percent mana zeroed. Well. uh he is really low on mana this is not good i don't know if Zin, uh if if Vinruki's gonna have enough here I, I really don't know this seems pretty bad is that okay he what the fuck was that Ven, Ven's opening up the VOD to see what we have to say. You're a sexy beast. You're just a sexy. What did you just do? What did you just what do? Explain do? it to us, please. Oh my god, dude. Ven literally just stream sniped us because he's that flexing. Damage. He's just like, yeah, let's just see what the casters have to say about it. Yeah, dude. Just, oh, from the caster to the casted. Okay, dude. Just no big deal. Ven Rookie, and guys, we're here joined by Ven Rookie once more. He just oh beat Zeroed in round two. Tell us about it. Um, well, we had a few surprises. Obviously, you guys got to see that. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, you guys kind of mentioned how we got to duel against Bean yesterday. And I think it was a wake up call. But oh, well, yes, uh, some people in the desk were saying that, that, you know, Bean, I think Bean is kind of like a different beast. Uh, I think he's a really, really good player. A he's lagoon, got a ton a of gear. Lagoon, if you will. Yes, exactly. He's a different chickpea. And uh, the thing is, this is something I kind of always say is I don't always, you know what I mean? You don't always practice. I'm not going to stream all my practice and every strategy I'm going to implement in a tournament. So Naturally. that's why you always, uh, you hold on to a few surprises. Right. Yeah. So, so it looked like what you went with there in the first duel, you, you played a lot more, uh, uh, a lot more passively trying to uh -huh. focus on poking more and wearing them down a little bit. And then you got much more aggressive in the last <laughs> two duels. Um, what, what made you kind of flip the switch? I lost. So I was like, all right, well, it's do or die. Time to reveal it. We wanted to hold on to those as long as we can because it's not uh, like the, obviously you guys probably looked up the big one. It's not something everyone has prepared for this tournament and uh, we got it ready to roll. And the backs against situation. the wall, got to bust out all the stops, you know? <laughs> there you go. Very good. Mr. Rookie, thank you for joining us. <laughs> all right. Thank you.
got a we got a big one there to take care of. You can see the duel right now. It's going it's going on. Hey, just reset? It's so okay, hard. Right, right. Right. Yeah, it's right go. at the beginning. Let's go. We'll just keep going. That's fine. It doesn't matter. Grenade gonna come okay, out let's here. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, we see the grenade go out trying to close that space sony going to start taking a little bit of damage here but it is going to be healing set that's torn healing into that is half health yeah he's got plenty of mana though to work with if he can create a little bit of space the question is whether or not he's going to be able to do it because he's going to go for a mind control to try to oh, do it wow. run him away this is Look really what sony, we expect from him. he's not having yeah, it man. he's 15 a month yep. to not even play my character and like, you can, can also you see that yeah this is this is beautifully done oh, by healing stat man. we saw him use the mind control in the last one as well now it's going to be sony who's riding down quite a bit he's reconnects oh, to him that's himself. a What's big crit that is so good for sony he immediately got a big crit now he's got to fight through that absorb shield and he's already threw it again and then healing set only really has to do 600 damage to him 500 damage to him and i think that he can probably just wand it oh what the fuck what what the fuck Lucky is okay. It. They're back at it. Let's go. Let's they're back so, at it. Let's so go. Here, here's Keep the going. thing. And then so Sony, immediately healing so, stat makes the distance. And then okay. I, I want to say this really quick. Sony basically there was a tiny little opportunity. Yeah. And he used it. Absolutely. That's not luck. That's being a god. Let's yes. see if he's able to do that again. Okay. We'll he's see. Have he's to already at half health. And then he gets mind controlled away from healing stat. He's doing the exact same thing. And then immediately he goes for the uh, the the bandage, which was actually really good because there wasn't a dot on him at the beginning. That's really, really bad for uh, for healing set. Healing set's already below half mana. Sony's doing really well right now. He's trying to wand him down, and Sony's got about a 1,000 health left, but healing set's already lost his shield. He got feared again. Sony Berserker Rage is right out of the fear. He stuns the, uh, what was that? The, he war stomps that, and then I think healing set might go for a second mind control, but it doesn't really matter. I mean, so oh, he got another shield. This yeah, is I not think good he just for closes Sony. Here. This is not good for Sony. Uh, it, unless that, unless he gets another round of lucky crits, that's going to be over. Okay, so it's starting off. Obviously, Sony's probably got the charge off right there. There we go. And then immediately hitting him with a 4,000. And then Healing Set is immediately trying Here's to just MC. mind control him right away, immediately. And then he's running away here, and he immediately stuns the interrupt here. He's trying to do as much damage as possible. He interrupted that stun, or that heal with the grenade. Here we go. And Healing Set is basically just trying to heal through the damage. All he's doing is rotting down Sony right now. He's playing the long game. Sony, keep in mind, is already down 1,000 health almost. But Sony is also true, chewed through so much of that mana, that's and that's right. why Adrian needs to get this mind control here. If he can get this, create the gap, create the space, then those that rot pressure that he gets out is actually going to be very big but sony's just been denying absolutely everything we're finding adrian almost tapped out on mana only 629 left and then sony gonna be able to charge in sony might another take it. charge is this gonna be is this gonna be a, a reversal of fates is sony actually going to come out ahead here uh healing stat has got to do something massive to make sure that uh I... <clears throat> all right so Mr. Uh, Mr. Digital, nice to see you. Uh, great performance you there. Too, sir. You know, I, I thought you. you I thought you looked pretty big, but uh, I didn't realize it was as big as you are. So I mean, this is pretty. This is pretty good. But uh, yeah, I'd say we're about equal size, kind of. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised. <clears throat> Maybe I could war stomp like you too. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, so that was a great match. Uh, I, I think that a lot of people went into that duel and uh, thought that Priest had a pretty significant advantage against you. Uh, I do think you had a few things in your favor. At level 40, comparing the level 40 meta to the level 30 meta, uh, you now have Mortal Strike, which is something that I do think played a big factor in. What do you think? Uh, yeah, Mortal Strike's huge, obviously, because it reduces the, the you know how effective his heals are. But other than that, you know, Warriors don't get a whole lot at 40, given we're still using Whirlwind Axe and stuff. But I'm just happy I was able to kind of present, showcase a Warrior, um, you know, Warrior's potential. So. Indubitably, indubitably. Do you have any? Uh, do, do you have any other uh, thoughts about this? Any other thoughts about the matchup or, or going forward? Well, so I noticed that you guys didn't interview me after uh, the first round, and I was just kind of wondering, like, is you got something against Warriors? I had to like win my second round just to get an interview up here. Or is, <laughs> how's that working? I do. <clears throat> I do. Rep Prio. Okay. That's what I have against okay. Warriors. Okay. All right. All it right, definitely, right. it definitely wasn't because I forgot to plug in the headset last night and I've been charging it <laughs> in between interviews. That is definitely not the reason. So. No, no, I'm just messing. I'm just messing. But yo, real quick, I don't know if I'm gonna get next rounded. Probably will have been rookie. You guys are killing it. This tournament's awesome. Production value is hilarious. Keep it running, boys. <laughs> Hello. I think I, I can't hear us, Finn. What happened? Frick! It's <laughs> <laughs> die again. All right, here we go. Sidu versus uh, 
All right, let's start. He immediately opens up with a rank one Frostbolt. He gets tries to get a second one. Earthshock interrupts the cast. Sidu immediately gets rooted by that thing. And then, oh, that's an immunity. Okay, he immuned it. I guess he ground it right there. He gets a, uh, a crit on the Cone of Cold. Okay, here we go. Sidu's still at 100% health. And then this is what I was talking about before. Yep. Here we go. Here's, uh, here's Zico resetting here. He's going getting ready. Sidu's sitting there. He doesn't know what to do. doesn't know what's going to happen. Uh, Zico resets. Uh, the polymorph. All right. Now what? You you can also see. Oh, too. he's right there on top of him. He's right there on top of him. He hits him with the grenade right there, and then Sidu comes right out of it, dealing damage. Okay. And then what? The oh, he just took him right down to half health. Okay, that's how fast it can happen. That's what Sidu is relying on right there. And then he's just trying to get away. Uh, obviously, Zico just went and he reset right there with an ice block. He got right out of it. Hit him with a cone of cold. Now all the thing like the only thing that Zico can't let happen is for Sidu to reset here. I think this could be Sidu's game or sorry. Zico's game to lose here. And Let's you can see, see Zico happen. continuing to pump out the damage. When, when we saw Zico, Zico actually could go down here. He yeah, still has 50% mana to work with. Lightning. Chain and, Lightning. Oh, he blocked the Chain Lightning. And then he goes for the Lesser Healing Wave. He's trying to finish him. Wait, Zico can't quite finish it. Is Sidu actually going to win this? He might have to try to reset all the way. I think he just Let's went see. Here. He should oh, just Oh my God. Here. Is this going to be it? Zico went all in. And this is the big thing. And is he, he going to be able to just connect out. here? Uh, yeah, he's just trying to run away right now, running around the entirety of the island. The big oh thing is, you saw the hands go up from Sidu when he gets sheeped. 5% health. Leaving the dueling he's, area. Uh, he's trying not to. He's trying not to. And then that's the Frost Shock or the Earth Shock that just ended it all. Now, getting the duel underway, the question is, will Sidu be able to make this one a 2-0 okay, space here we go. created by and the then, Black So Lizard. they're starting off right there immediately. Uh, Zico does the exact same thing, goes for the rank one uh, Frostbolt just to keep him at max range. Now, at this point, obviously, Zico is going to be playing much more defensively than he was in the first round. He doesn't have as many outs. He can't play as offensively. And he's trying to just wait for that perfect opportunity to just go in there. And he got right out of that sheep. That is not good for Zico at all. Uh-oh. And then it is another polymorph, though. That's one of the good things about being a mage. It, this is relative. And then he's back out of it, though. It's decent timing for it to happen because there isn't that much that's already tr transpired in the matchup. Yep. Uh, going to try to close a little bit oh, of the space here. Oh, he's running all the way over there. Okay. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't so want to let Zico for? drink. Yeah, yeah, that's basically what's happening. So, Sidu is actually winning this right now. I mean, like, Zico is already at half mana. I don't think that he used the... Uh, I, I don't think he used Evocate in the first round, though. Yeah, you're going to see uh, the Chain so Lightning. It's a Chain Lightning. That damage is so ridiculous. Look at that. Two, 300 damage almost. Zico is already under 50% health, and Sidu is just chasing him down. We see him right there out by the water. He throws the iron grenade. Is he going to get it? He still gets it because of spell batching. Let's see how this is going to go. And then immediately... He, he just fried him so hard that we saw the bracket for a second it, there. It, it literally... Guys, I want you to explain. It did so much damage that we couldn't even see it. I, we didn't want to show you that damage because we knew it it's, would scare it's, everybody. It's in TOS. Fact. It's actually TOS yeah, yeah, to show that much damage at once. It's disgusting. Where he was at 49. <clears throat> Excuse me, Asmin, I'm talking. Please don't interrupt Sorry. me. Sorry. Chuck Dooland. Do What's you know, up, has brother? anybody ever told you, like, your name sounds like you could be, like, a sheriff or, like, one of those, like, local lawyers, like, on local TV? Like, Chuck Dooland, the Texas Hammer. Like, have you ever... <laughs> Chuck Doolin, attorney at law. Yeah, I think, dude, I think it could work. So how do you feel? How did you feel about that matchup against Mage? Um, I was a little afraid of Zico because he plays like really aggressive. But uh, fortunately for me, I think it was in my favor to have dueled him before the tournament started because I know exactly what he wants. What he wants to do, he wants to sheet me early on, quite, and then he wants quite. to go really hard with like the big, the big bomb, five second stun, and I was just like super ready for it. So. I was just able to insta trinket the first one and then I just try and stall out sheeps for as long as possible. And I think I had some really good uh, early breaks in that last duel, so he didn't actually have time to set it up when I didn't have trinket. So, you know, a little bit of luck right. involved, but uh, <laughs> big numbers. Yeah, it seems like people are really, really excited about this. So, like, the crowd is all gathering around. It's, it's really, really nice. So, people uh, people obviously are, are big fans and they're very, uh, they're very excited to see you pull that off. Definitely. Yeah. Fog. All right. Thank you, Mr. Dew. Talk to you soon. Thank you very much. Payo actually put sleeves back on. Maybe getting a little okay. bit chilly for a little Payo. Look at that. All right, here we go. So Not Payo immediately goes bones. into uh, he immediately goes into stealth. Dracova's waiting. Probably might have perception up. We'll see what's going to happen. So we're waiting on Dracova. Oh, he immediately gets Payo out, and then Payo responds by getting a gouge. Okay, that's good. That's uh, very good. Very nice. Payo's yep. getting away. He's going to be able to get a re-stealth here. 
and then that's going to be back. Oh, oh, wow. What is this? What This is a French Canadian strat, if I've ever seen one myself. This is incredible. He got on the mountain. Obviously, that didn't work out. He brought out the pet, and then he's just going to immediately start attacking Dragova. Peo is already down 1,000 health. This is not looking good for him already. It's the 4th of July Classic. Gets on that mount. Paul Revere's. The British are That's coming. Right. The British are coming. But the question is, where is the damage going to come from? We can already see full combo points have been established on the side of Peo. Are we going to see that burst that we saw earlier on? Yeah, that Peo is just absolutely destroying Dracova. Dracova is losing so much health in Dracova bubbles, and Peo vanishes. Okay, this is a reset. This is a first reset. Peo obviously has to get away and heal himself up, and then we're going to get back into this. And uh, honestly, at this point, I mean, this could be anybody's game. Well, keep in mind as well, some of the strengths that are going to happen to classes that are a little bit burstier with their toolkits, they're going to use everything oh, in a matchup like this. Oh, this is the best of one. Peo already so Okay, that, that's so... That's so good. So Peo obviously was kept in combat with the Dragonling. He sapped him, and then he has two pets. These pets right here are going to hurt Peo so much because he's got to watch out for the pets. Now he's going to probably start actually eating here. And uh, Dracova can just sit right back down and start drinking, and he was able to switch off his trinkets too as well. So now he's got his uh, PUP trinket up and as well as the Mark of the Chosen so he can get more stats. Peo's sitting down here getting ready to drink, and this is basically a full reset minus, uh, minus Vanish and minus Bubble. Yeah, I, I think a full reset is exactly kind of what both of these players want. They're going to yeah. allow... Uh, each other to take that time. We're going to see Mana getting grabbed for Dracova. And keep in mind what he was able to do in that first round, right? He, he yeah. already was somebody that made us believe he's trying to go for that deep run after playing it so close against Fenruki, somebody who was really trying to figure out that matchup, being one of the Horde players that hasn't had dueling experience as much against some of these Paladins. If you don't know the name Dracova, you definitely want to throw some respect on it. It was Esfan who was actually talking him up, saying how highly he did rate this player. If there was going to be somebody to represent the class, he said it was going to be this guy, and now he's going to be fishing, trying to get out the rogue from stealth who is actually lighting a basic campfire. Lil Peo taking a little break here. Uh, he said he took his okay. nap out of yeah. game, and now he's uh, going he's to be taking player. his nap what in game. Hey, man, uh, I'm a role player as well. Uh, so, Dracova is running around randomly outside trying to throw grenades. <laughs> Peo's looking for some fish to cook right now on, on that fireplace. Oh, my God. Uh, he's definitely going to have oh it. Oh, my. Oh, wow. oh, what is this? Cooking God. What is this? He actually got it. Uh, he got a fish first I don't try. think Dracova. Oh, yeah. I mean, look, he's a great player. What can I say? Okay. doesn't matter which uh, aspect of the game. We're seeing that Peo is so, completely 99 fishing. He's everything. Dracova has no idea, dude. He's just running around. Dude, part, part of the problem is he can't tab target because I think it targets the other uh, the other horde players. Yeah, yeah you I, can't I tab see. target. Peo's gonna come out, but yeah, Dracova looked more okay. lost there than some of our uh, our friends in the WoW section when they are, are at the bar trying to hit on ladies. But finally, Dracova now is going to see his target. Yeah. Will he be able to laser beam focus onto him, or is Peo just going to dirtle around more and enjoy this beautiful July third day? Let's see how this is gonna happen. So Peo's just chilling, hanging out, just having a good time, just whenever he gets a chance. Maybe going back over to Dracova and attacking him, and then. Maybe getting a little sap right there. Okay, and then we have Peo. He's able to just sit here and wait. Let's see what this is going to happen, how this is going to go. So something to okay. consider. It is against the rules for a rogue to sit in stealth and delay the duel for too long. Oh, uh, so, well, he's not delaying. He's getting right back. He wasn't it. even okay, stealth. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, no, I know, we I'm, go. Just, I'm just Let's saying like, that's something to consider uh, if, I, if, I know. Uh, if it gets too bad. Can we have the horde kill Rich Turpin? He's right next to him. Uh, yeah, I, I think the other thing that we do need to keep in mind is that Peo has just some of the most damage yeah, on the planet. And, and Dracova's already half health. Peo is just so confident, making sure he's absolutely completely ready. He saps him again. I don't know what he's thinking with this battle chicken. If he's just not going to deal with the battle chicken at all and focus entirely on killing Dracova, let's find out. So Peo's going to go back into stealth right here and probably reopen on Dracova. There we go with the cheap shot. Dracova trinkets right out of it. He stuns Peo with a bomb, and then Dracova immediately heals himself up back. Almost. Oh, he gets it interrupted. This is not good for Dracova at all. Dracova has a sword and shield on. He's being lower and lower and lower on health. He gets a gouge. Peo is getting ready. He's letting his energy regen, and then Dracova is able to repentance and maybe get a holy light off. I'm pretty sure he will. And this is going to take Dracova maybe up to 60 percent health we'll see you got to choke the chicken or get choked by the chicken and it looks like this chicken might just overwhelm dracova here he is going to back off just a little bit full combo points we're going to see a big not, chunky finisher move just rip dracova to shreds yeah, this is not good at all for dracova and then he opens up back with the stun this is actually not very good for peo either this is where dracova can't
can turn things around a little bit. And then Dracova, as you guys saw, just right there, used his lay on hands. That's basically one of the last things that he has available to him. I think he can also use Blessing and Protection, but we'll see if that's going to even happen. So Dracova is almost half, he's half health again, even after lay on hands. He's got Mechanical Dragonling attacking him on top of Peo. Peo is just chunking him down. Peo with an almost full energy. Or there it is. So, Peo, you went with a very interesting strategy there. Uh, I saw you were out there. Um, you were out there. You, you were camping a little bit in the middle of the duel. You were regening your spirit with that basic campfire. Oh, uh, did I cheat? Oh, yeah, I should cheat. Yeah, I forgot about that. Huh? Yeah, I kind of cheated. Uh, no, yeah, no, no. It, it's fine. The campfire was not stated in the rules that you can't use a basic campfire. <laughs> so, so All right. I, I don't think I don't think it, it, it made too big of a difference. Uh, however, you were okay. out there. You were fishing for some fish, and uh, now it looks yeah. like you're, you're, you're fishing for compliments too. How does that feel? Uh, pretty good, because I said I, I, I want to get 300 before the beta end, right? Mm. So I'm at 278, and I actually got one level, I think. I have some progress in the chat, boys. I was at 279, we're now at 280. That was up. No, I just started, because he was running around. I was He was running around, so I just said I'm going to go uh, on stealth so he can open, right? Right, right. Indubitably, indubitably. So how does yeah. it feel? You, you, you were out. There were there were some issues. There was some uh, there was some controversy trying to figure out what the what the proper uh, <laughs> what the proper verdict should have been. And now here we are. So you you have a chance at redemption here. How does it feel? Yeah, cool, man. It feels super cool. Thank you for uh, making me uh, another chance, of course, in the loser brackets. Of course. Thank of you for course. joining us, Pale. I love you, Asman. I love you too. I'll talk to you soon. Asman, go. I'm a big fan, of course. Pog is in the chat. Th hey, right. th thanks. Yeah, thanks, Pale. Yo, uh, yo, wait, wait a second. How long I have? Because I would like to take a little nap, of course. Yeah, go ahead. You take can't a nap, take. Yeah. Well, you can't take a nap. Because I played a game for like three. Uh, I tell three M this morning. So but he, said, is he it... said, "I love." He said, "I love S Fine." He said, "Asmongold, I'm a huge fan." Uh, I'll see you later, Peo. Thanks. Yo, bro. thank you guys. Great tournament. I love you, and thanks for the invitation one more time, of course. Go if you, you, yeah, you can't just, uh, just don't oversleep. No, no, I won't. I won't trust. Thank you very much. I appreciate that, guys. I love you. Love you, Pale. I love you. Close enough. Yeah. Okay, let's go. There it is. And then immediately Sony charges in, goes into Berserker stance. Uh, Vinruki roots him, moves away. And then Sony's throwing a grenade. Is it going to hit Vinruki? That is not good for, for Sony at all. Vinruki immediately slows Sony with rank one Frostbolt. Sony can... There we go. He's using uh, Will of the Forsaken to get out of that intimidating shot. Sony is already at half health with that critical strike, a, a cone of cold plus the fire blast. He's just being kited around. Not really a whole lot he can do. Sony is pretty much living the life of a warrior. This is... You can even see it on, on Sony's face. It's just like, yeah. Like, it, this is something that you know that you can get into when you're playing in this matchup. It's a hard one to win. Sony definitely playing it well, but it's going to be match point for Van Ruki. Hands up, boys. That's the first time you said that. Uh, and ultimately, Van Ruki's going to try to say okay, the same thing going go. up against they his friend Sony. Yeah, they went ahead and started. Uh, I know. So basically what you're seeing here, wow, Sony getting a big crit, two big crits, Ooh. taking Vinruki all the way down to 40% health. This is actually really good for uh, for Vinruki. Sony, oh my God, Vinruki's only at 20%. 20% And he, he gets the not shape. happy. He's so not so happy. I can actually read lips. Sony said, oh my goodness, Frick. How the heck did he get out of this situation and get me in the sheep? That was what he said. No curse words because Sony is an absolute class act. Absolutely. You can also watch his stream right now. He's, yep. he's probably going to be streaming Battlegrounds or something after this because it looks like Ben Ruki, even after that insurmountable amount of damage, is able to get a full well, he, reset with that sheep. And now look who's on the back foot. Yep, it's going to be Sony. A, he, well, he got a root on, uh, on Sony, and that's really not going to help him either. Okay, here's the big one. He's dropping the bomb. Boom. 300 damage but the stun didn't go through and then sony go and says and charges over this is actually not that good for vin uh, i'm actually surprised that it's gotten this close sony roots him right there sorry uh yeah vin roots sony right there and dude sony's actually so good though i, so, I mean like you look, look at that matchup I mean, like everybody knew that was gonna happen we're getting into okay. the very late stages of the tournament here we go so you do focusing up immediately combat starts hits him with an earth shock immediately starts hitting him trying to stop that polymorph he stunned him with the uh the uh was that the bomb right there and then all seeing like he, oh he got the polymorph poly. out even though he hit him with the earth shock 
that spell batching right there, boys. All Seeing Eye going into position. c is not in a good place right now. All Seeing Eye is doing exactly what Zico was trying to do as well, getting in position and starting the kite right here. It's going to be very hard for c to be able to reset and get back into the same position that he was at the beginning. So here we go. c is trying to go after him. All Seeing Eye is just pumping Frost Bolts into him, doing a ton of damage. And c isn't really taking that much damage at all. And he's moving in here, and he's doing already a lot of damage. Hit him with a crit, almost 400 damage with a Kona Cold. That's a lot right there. We've got, obviously, Totems going down, Grounding Totem going down, Rooting uh, Sidu, moving away again. He's obviously trying to outrange those Totems, so he doesn't even have to worry about wasting his time with them. He blocked the Chain Lightning. Yeah, uh, the, the Chain Lightning is really where Chuck's going to do most of his damage. Yeah. And on top of that, we're going to have another reset with a Poly. These Polys right. are devastating. Sidu wasn't able to get the damage out because of the block. Now he's going to need to look for another Chain Lightning, and we know that All Seeing Eyes probably already snapped. Well, that was he lightning Evocate right there. there. He just used his Evocate right there. So he can't use that again, basically, for probably the entire rest of this duration of the duels. So then he's probably going to go for another Polymorph as well. Now, All Seeing Eye almost has full health, and he almost has full mana. Sidu is at half mana. I don't know if that's going to be enough for All Seeing Eye to be able to secure a victory here, but we'll find out. The, the question is whether or not in oh, he gripped into him with Beautiful. the, oh my god, with the net matic and then he blinked away. Okay, all-seeing eye is definitely in a, in a bad position here. As you guys can see, he just jumped away right there, and Sidu going back over to him right now. Here we go, let's see it. And, and the, the other thing to note is if we actually see a chain lightning getting yep. off, let's say that we do see another ice block stolen away here, right. a sheep in the middle of the go is where we can see the all seeing eye oh. potentially win this he could be the go where chuck closes it. it out okay here we go let's see and then hitting him with the lightning bolt already let's see healing with lesser healing wave all seeing eye almost no mana let's see oh he just used his mana gem right there he's at about 40 percent mana Sidu is trying to just heal himself up doing whatever he can and then right now Sidu was able to pretty much full heal right there with the uh uh well, also, it, another thing that yeah. we do need to know, he was able to get off a sheep here in the middle of the go, and then he was able to stop the totem. He threw out just a frost bolt, rank yeah. one, get rid of that grounding totem. That means oh, that, that Polly could come big. out again. This, that was a this go has to be right it. There. If Chuck can't win in this go, all of a sudden you really have to favor all seeing eye because he has okay. all the reset potential. Looking for some lightning bolts, looking for a chain lightning, but the gap has been secured. 30 seconds, 30 seconds on that route. All seeing eye is going to be able to almost for sure be able to fully reset this. CD might actually need to go over there on his mount at this point. So all seeing eye is sitting down. He's drinking. Now, again, he has already used his, uh, what do you call it? He's already used his evocation. Everything else is pretty much all up. So they're pretty much going for a full reset now. All seeing eye at about half, maybe probably going to get the full mana and CD at about the exact same place. Well, you have to also look at all seeing eye and just talk about how ridiculously well this guy is playing yeah. because he's also alliance you expect him to not have as many duels against shaman and yep. he knows exactly how to play this matchup better than some of the horde that we've even seen thus far and he's been able to really push chuck into bad situations oh yeah now he, he's also been dealing fantastically well with yeah, the groundings get, getting and getting sheets not again. grounded yeah he's getting max range again now obviously he's going to try and polymorph him again just to get a full reset and be able to just completely go in on it. Now he's gonna start channeling Frost Bolts. Now, All Seeing Eye doesn't have that much mana. That's something that I'm really kind of worried about. Is he gonna run out of mana? So obviously, Sidu dropped his Grounding Tone, was able to help him get a little bit closer. Sidu casting Lightning Bolts already on All Seeing Eye. This is not good, a 500 crit with that Lightning Bolt and an Earth Shot crit on top of that. Dropping a grenade, hitting All Seeing Eye with the grenade. All Seeing Eye at 12 health, and that is it. Sidu finishes it off, the first match winning. That was out of nowhere all right guys we have seen Sidu manage to pull out the first victory in this series it looked like he had fallen behind so yeah. many times again look for just an, a completely right explosive opener okay there we go obviously already and he's probably gonna use chain lightning right there doing as much damage he as possible it. all seeing eyes trying to do as much as he can fake there we go 300 damage on that chain lightning already dealing damage to all seeing eye trying to get him with that bomb right there all the way at max range i'm not sure if that's going to happen it did but it didn't really matter because the polymorph came out at the same time really not a very good position and not good timing for Sidu. and so obviously he's going to be down with that bomb and all seeing eye is going to move all the way back to evocate again and hopefully reset this duel in his favor one thing that we did hear early on from chuck when he actually had his interview he talks about those early polys being something that he wants to get rid of he has a really good opener that time around. He actually is able to get a fake off. Then at, right after that fake, he has down his grounding totem. So we see him have a strong opener, but yeah. still 
unlike what we saw in the previous matchup, we see All Seeing Eye being able to create space and get a polymorph. Well, they still. basically did an agreement of a uh, of a full reset right there. So uh, Sidu using a rank one lightning bolt to I guess keep uh, All Seeing Eye in combat, and now it's just doing damage to him right there. Another uh, full full duration polymorph. All Seeing Eye doing that immediately, killing the grounding totem. Probably going to go in here for maybe a frost nova. Oh no, let's see, it's another polymorph. Okay, it's a ten second polymorph. All Seeing Eye seeing what's going to happen, and then another polymorph on top of that, just hitting him right there. Five Fighting in combat, all seeing eye getting extremely aggressive right here. This is what we saw originally with this guy, and let's see if that confidence is going to pay off. All right. Okay. We, here we, we already go. saw how explosive the shaman's yeah, damage can is... be, and he closes a little bit of space. Seedu, though, for a second, has to back off the aggression, yep. looking for some healing, but the chain lightning just went yeah! He's going to be able to take him down. There it is. Match point for Seedu. What? 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 All right, is All Seeing Eye going to make a reverse sweep or not? Let's find out. All Seedu has to do is win one of the next three games, and then he moves on to the semifinals. Well, he, he goes to play against Van Rookie, yep. a, a friend, a teammate, and the person that he actually played and sent him to third place in the last tournament. We know that the big respect needs to come around these chain lightnings. So expect Seedu yep. to actually try to bait out a kick here. Expect him to try to fake, and also, he wants to try to get that ice block nice and early. Oh, All seeing that I grenade, that grenade with the lightning bolt right there, trying to line aside the lightning bolt. I'm not sure if that really was going to work. All seeing eye already at half health and then casting another lightning bolt, just doing as much damage as possible. A 500 crit. Oh, All seeing eye is going to have to reset right now. He has to reset right now. And this is going to be a full polymorph, so it will be absolutely completely possible. You, you, you no. see there, uh, Chuck says, H-E double That's hockey sticks, one. man, because if he doesn't end up in the sheep, it, it's completely over. And he tried to actually get away from that situation yes. of the sheep. The sheep is pretty much the bane of Thrall's existence here. And then we see another polymorph leading up. All seeing eye still not really that much mana, but again, he does have Evo Kate back up again. All seeing eye starting this fight out with a uh, minus about 500 health. That's obviously not going to be helping him a whole lot, but uh, he's pretty confident in going back into it. So here we go, doing two rank one frost bolts. And then C2 starts casting chain lightning again, interrupts him, gives him a, uh, a counter spell. C2 moving away, so obviously he has to move forward. Grounding totem is out. He's killing grounding totem immediately. C2 is using uh, first aid and then back to casting lightning bolts. He's trying to outrange the lightning bolts, which is a good idea, but it still did get the first one off. All seeing eye already at half health, and the chain lightning goes off, and the bomb goes off, and the polymorph goes off. This seems like deja vu to me. Let's see what's going to happen. All seeing eye goes to immediately kill the grounding totem. He's going to sit down and probably drink. Now he is going to be a little bit low on men on this, so we're going to see what's going to happen. Now he's already got five seconds left. There's no way all seeing eye is going to be able to fully regen his health here. Eight, That's the big yeah. problem here. Eight, so he's, he's, relying on he's the going back into combat. He's going back into combat here. Okay, here we go. There's only a a few hits that Sidu even needs to make here. This is not good, and that is over. It is a 3 0 sweep from Sidu going into the semifinals. He was getting ready for this next one. Hot form representing Canada. We, we have a bunch of Canadians in this tournament right now. They, they've some of them been okay, already opening They're up, already starting off. Hot form immediately gets on him. Uh, Zico roots him. Hot form trinkets out of the root and then stuns Zico with a kidney shot. Let's see how this is going to go. Zico is just taking damage right now. Hot form isn't really taking anything. Okay, Zico immediately tried to go for the uh, the polymorph. He got it blinded and then immediately blocked out of the blind. Okay, here we go. And then he's moving away. Hot form immediately tries to go for the uh, the first aid. It gets denied by a cone of cold. He goes for the vanish, hits him with the uh, cheap shot, immediately blinks the cheap shot. And here we go. He's getting the rank one frost bolt, I'm pretty sure, on him just to keep him in combat and keep him in control. This is really, really good for Zico right here. This is incredibly good for Zico. He's going to be able to completely reset this match. This is amazing for him right now. Yeah, if finally he gets that opportunity to take a yep. little bit of a breath here because hot form, he came out completely he's hot. Not, he's like not close, even, but, he's but not even he's cool going up. for it. He's just going for the kill. Like Zico is actually just going for the kill. Like hot form is just taking damage. Hot form. Well, look, I mean, like. Wait. No way. No, no. No, no way, dude. No way, dude. Is this really going to happen? Okay. Uh, let's see. So he's uh, he's actually sitting down and eating in Shadow Melt form. This is going to be a complete reset. Zico was literally, like, what was that? Three, five, ten health away? That's what we call the power of the Alliance. Oh, my God, dude. 
Look at that. And Hot Farm is still getting kited. Zico is m determined to make sure that was not just a fluke. And he actually does deserve this win. Finishing off Hot Farm. Let's see if it's going to happen. He's got 1% health. He goes for the, ah! he goes for the no! bandage. And then he goes for another one. And then he stuns him right there. Zico blocks out How of it. So and then he finishes alive? him off with the wand. Uh, yes, obviously, uh, Mr. Form. Uh, you, you did very well. Uh, you, you had one great chance at a comeback. Uh, how, how did you feel about your chances there whenever uh, one of you got to that point? Uh, I was pretty sure I was going to lose to Zico. Uh, he's a really good mage. And if anything, mages are the hardest fight rogue. So I, I had a couple tricks on my sleeve, but ultimately so did he. And he came out of top. Am I flying right now? This is ridiculous. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, I don't know how I ended up up here, but uh, I'm in the air right now. So I, I'm very excited to be here, man. It's just this tournament has been so exciting to watch. You, Hot Form, and so many of these other competitors. It just feels like I'm on top of the world, man. I'm just I'm just flying high right now. So just want to say Me great too. job competing today, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you. It was an honor. Thank you. We're going to see, though, uh, what the move is okay. for this Red Healing Paladin. Stat is just immediately kiting backwards, running it out, just basically making as much time as possible, just damaging down Absurge very, very slowly, hits him with the Psychic Scream, runs with him. That's pretty interesting. And then immediately probably hitting him with a Mind Blast. Maybe, yep, there's a Mind Blast right there and just doing as much damage as possible to Absurge. And then Healing Stat is just trying to get as much, much range as he possibly can. This is not looking good already for Absurge. Absurge, you guys see his mana? Yeah, me either. Not looking good. And then he's immediately having to judge him with wisdom to try to get any mana back possible. This is really, really bad for Absurge. This seems like it might just be over before it's even begun. But Paladins do have a lot of big CDs, so let's see what's going to happen it's here. It's so hard for him to close. I think that's what the big yeah, thing is. is. You know, you get the space with the mind control. Look how look how the ret waddles. Look how it waddles. And Healing Set's just standing back. Oh, he's letting the rots go through. So the only time we saw him close literally the only time that we saw a, a close that's lay on hands. hands okay i mean you have to this is this you is have a, to. This a single is elimination yep. uh, the, the thing is the only time we saw a close was off the back of a rep and you're oh, not going to be able to consistently shit. get that healing stat can make space again if that, he needs to that being said healing stat is uh he's used up a lot of his mana uh so that that's definitely a big factor now uh obviously absurge is going to be able to get back in range before this dueling thing goes away two seconds left always kind of annoying that happened healing set shrinking immediately out of that hammer of justice and basically just running away from absurge slowly we got a, a blackout proc very very lucky for healing set again absurge with almost no mana whatsoever he still does have bubble but even if he uses it i don't really know if it's i don't know if it's going to make a bit of a difference because he doesn't even have any mana to do anything with it that, that was a good stun so, out that came by healing yeah. set and you can see healing set now he's gotten what he needed to get he got a yep. lot of those big cooldowns and now the space game is going to be a little bit trickier the auto attacks aren't going to be juicy enough he has a bubble he has i don't actually think he, he has will to work with anymore way. but uh, oh he does so uh, he has inner fire mana. this it, healing set might have played a little bit too offensively here i so think let's he can still win with happen. the wand inner fire and bubble are going to do so much here that yeah. now he can just rely on all that that juicy spirit that he has and we're not going to see absurd able to do too much damage through yeah. the defense that healing set already has and this is going to be the bubble right here probably oh nice there's fear. a psychic scream and this has got to be a bubble where it's going to be gg this has got to be a bubble where it's going to be GG. There's bubble right there. Healing stat. Uh... He's bubble hearthing. He's bubble hearthing. <laughs> no. That's how you play it. No, he didn't even get the bubble heart. Oh, no. Oh, Absurd. my God. That is the biggest no, foul that's ever man. happened in World of Warcraft history. You can't even bubble heart. To be fair to Absturge, yeah. you can't bubble hearth until I think level 42. I can tell. <laughs> Okay, let's make it happen. A little pale after a little nap. Is he going to yep. be energized enough to take down Officer Bean? Uh, let's find out. Okay, Bean's sitting there right there, right on top of his flare. Peo's going to maybe try the same strategy as he had before. <laughs> he throws up another, uh, another flare. Peo has changed for every duel. He's actually worn something different for every duel. Wow, that's more than I. Yeah, he's word he's changed more often than I do in an entire month. This is impressive. I actually th is that a headband? It is. He's been wearing a headband the whole time though. Is he Wow's ninja? What ninja. is this? Hug. Okay. All right, and he's me. Oh, he's going for the pet kill. 
He's going for the pet kill. This is very interesting. And he blinded him there. I don't know if this is going to be a good decision or not, but let's go ahead and find out. He has to kill him pretty this is soon smart. here. He has to kill him. That is actually not good at all. That is not good at all. Uh, getting him no, there. I, I, uh, I think that that's actually a pretty solid play there. Well, oh, he made it. He made it. Okay, peo has got the battle chicken out. Okay, he's getting him at the grenade. Peo's already at 50% health. This is not looking good for Bean already. He trapped Peo, and then he's killing the battle chicken. He has okay. to. If you don't choke the chicken, you get choked by the chicken. I can uh, you'll see hear that. You say it time and time again. And now, though, Peo actually had a really smart play. It was a really good use right. of that stun. It allowed him to basically have a full opener without having the opener. Yep. And now he can actually close the space onto Bean. Bean needs to oh. be a kiting Andy. Right there. I mean, honestly, if that if that dot had just ticked in a different way, that probably would have been really good for Peo, but obviously it didn't. He's moving away here. Obviously, Serpent Sting is falling away. He's getting as much uh, health as possible with his bandages, and let's see if he's going to be able to get back in stealth. He was not able to get back in stealth. He's trying to just run out and reset. This is not looking good for Peo at all. He's going right to the edge. Bean is just hunting him down with Hunter's Mark. Peo throws the grenade. Is it going to hit Bean? It missed. This is not good for Peo. 80 health, 1 health. It is over for little payo all right bean versus black lizard oh well, here we go let's start it off so immediately uh he opens up with a scatter shot starts hitting him immediately starts viper singing him uh <laughs> oh wow he uh feigned deaths to stop that cast uh black lizard immediately blocks and removes that and then of course we do have another polymorph right here dropping the big one Obviously, Black Oz are doing a ton of damage, playing super offensively, trying to play inside Bean's dead zone. Bean is already at half health. Black Oz are still sitting there at 75, maybe even more. Be not only is he killing Bean, but he's also killing Oreo, Bean's oh pet. Goodness. And then he immediately, Black Oz are just oh, like, he give a he blocked out of the trap, dude. Double ice block whammy. He's able to take this Holy one down. Holy shit. Wow. It's confirmed. Lizards really do run the world. Black That's Lizard going to be able to take down this best of one and move forward in the tournament. Nice job okay oh, well, here we go all right there we go immediately hitting him with a frost strap freeze, freezing healing stat getting at max range uh charging up an aim shot and then probably just trying to run as far away as possible to outrange the uh, i'm assuming probably the uh the shadow word pain just to make that little bit more of time healing set is already down almost half health and half mana look at zero it's mana though as well oh my a god a a like zero has just he's he's getting fried here at this point healing stat doesn't have a pet though he healing stat also doesn't have any health at this point oh zero is god. trying to zero. take down healing stat what is this i think this might oh and zero. a trap well, Zero is actually, I, I believe that he's probably just trying to make sure that he just secures this win 100%. So Healing Set did have enough mana, obviously, for a shield, and that could have actually been really bad for uh, for Zero. He's running away there. I don't know if that trap was the right play or not, but we're going to find out. Healing Set chasing down Zero. Zero running away with Aspect of the Cheetah, obviously a little bit able to, able to move a little bit faster. But Healing Set, this is a pretty quick reversal, and it looks like Healing Set is probably going to win this unless Zero does a very, very good job with this. Obviously, Trap is going out. Trap did not hit or maybe trap didn't even happen zeroed with the stun that's it it's over i i think he stuck his own leg in that trap the trap was a trap healing stat going to be able to take this one down you can the see him getting excited yeah pretty much every single person yep. in chat was saying yo the hunter's got this the hunter's got it. this is why i was saying i thought he had it until stat. that trap like uh, until that trap i thought that he absolutely had it sometimes uh, the trap is a trap this there it is. That's a trap. Catch your own leg in it. And just like that, we are going to see Let's Zero. He's definitely okay. impressed us, but it is going to be none other than Healing Stat moving on forward to play against the All-Seeing Eye. This is going to be a match. This one? This is going to be a match. This dude. one, children will be born during this oh, match. This, this match is, is going to take so match, long. Dude. This is going to take a while. Okay. Um, do we want to do, um, let's do Sony and Zico. Can we do Sony and Zico? Uh, yeah, I think Sony and Zico would be good. Okay, let's make this happen. Let's go. People are naming their children after some of the competitors right now. I just saw in the chat. I hope so. Yeah. Uh, what, what are you guys naming your children right now as we load this one up? Uh, we definitely want to see MLG scorekeeping. Hey, we're keeping we're keeping some of the best traditions in gaming alive. Yeah, we're doing our best. This I'm naming my daughter the, uh, McConnell. This is the... This is the I, I almost named my dog McConnell. Like, no joke. Really? Uh, yeah, it was for content. You know, yeah. I was going to tell a bunch yeah, of yeah. people I was finally going to show everyone what McConnell looked like. So I was dog, just going to yeah. pick up a dog. Yeah. You could have just done that and then just had him have another name. I mean, dogs don't really speak English. You call them over the clock. You know? <laughs> They're just McConnell. Uh, but ultimately here, we are in a situation where I, I, I think we are pretty impressed with all the competitors. Yep. 
I got really distracted by thinking about McConnell there for a second. All right, Black Wizard versus Sony Digital. Let's make this happen. Here we go. Uh, whenever they're ready, we'll start the duel. Let's go. Getting this one underway. Sony Digital already had to go up against a mage. It didn't look very good. Sony played very well himself. Oh, yep. He's taking off some of that fabric that was holding him down. There we go. Yeah. Is Gachi Base enabled in your chat? I don't even know. I, to be, I, I don't. I think that it is. About to find out. Sure. About to okay, find out. Okay, here we go. So Sony's going to be able to get the charge right there. Immediately goes into Berserker Sense. Uh, let's see. Trinkets right out of that to create that immediate pressure. And then we see, obviously, Zico going for that Polymorph. He's just sitting around waiting for that. Hits the Iron Grenade. And it didn't hit Sony, but the Polymorph probably does. And there we go. He did a little bit of damage to... Uh, to Zico, I keep com confusing myself with Black Wizard. At the very beginning, I don't want to say Black Wizard too many times. And uh, this is not looking good for Sony. This is the traditional warrior. Um, this is... So basically what's going to happen here, see Sony's going to try to run over to him. Now eventually Sony, he puts on his sword and shield uh, for really no reason because the magical damage is happening. And uh, eventually he will be able to charge, at which point uh, Zico will immediately blink away. And then there we go. Obviously got right out of Will of the Forsaken. Got out of that. Frostbolt again. Just so he, here's how Sony can win. Here's how Sony can win. If he times everything perfectly and Zico doesn't kill him right now, and Zico decides he needs to go for a reset, and we see Sony have another MLG frag, like a, a no-scope, like a 420 no-scope, he like can win. Like the one that just happened to him? But it, yeah, it looks like Zico is just going to have every advantage here look at that offensive ice block just showing that he has the button will sony be able to punish that flex or will he fall down and we are going to see the war chief get taken out by the lizard that's a tough matchup for sony i think that's, sony that's is proven i think sony has proven that he goes. is the best warrior in in I, this I, I mean absolutely 100 percent. like sony put on a great show he did amazing he did better than uh i think everybody expected him to do so i'm very very impressed by that and now we're going to go to our final game in the loser's bracket until we go back up into the semifinals. Well, no, we're going to have Zico versus this one or two, right? So right, two yeah, more. exactly. Yeah, so we, we have healing set versus the all-seeing eye. Yep, and then you want to do Zico versus... Yeah, I think we just set up Z okay, let's Zico do doing that. that, and then we only have uh, those final matchups let's to play Let's do out. that. I think that's the way All to right. do it. So now it's going to be the all-seeing eye versus healing stack. Guys, All right, let's make it happen. We're really getting down to uh, the, the line here. So I saw so, some people ask about a few of the matchups. Both of the Warlocks... I had to go back to the Twisting Nether for some reason. Yeah, they they, right. they they disappeared. We lost them to the Void, and uh, ultimately uh, the, the Warlocks. That's the way it goes sometimes, you know? That's the way it goes. Shady characters, those Warlocks. They sure are. And ultimately that set up 4-0 to move forward, and that set the stage here on this side of the bracket. So it's nuts, and stay safe. We'll, we'll, we'll see them later. Absolutely. In okay. August. So whenever we're ready, we'll go ahead and we'll do Healing Stat versus All-Seeing Eye. I don't know how this one's going to go. I, I really, I think it could go either way. Yeah. Right. Uh, I haven't seen enough priest versus mage duels. Like whenever you get into like the healer meta and everything, that's whenever I really don't have any expertise as to like how I think that things are going to go. I, I really don't know. I mean, healing stat, one thing that he's proven here is that he's very, very good at surviving and staying alive. And especially he's very, very strong against mana classes because he can mana burn them. And he's been very efficient and very smart with the way that he's done that. I think that your mic's getting a little bit too low there. Uh, de definitely want to uh, pump that up. Pump it up? Oh, uh, how about now, guys? Are we, are we any better now? Yeah, uh, yeah, got messed what, up a little bit. That should be a little bit better. I, I think that was when uh, Sturge failed to bubble hearth. I think we we, we knocked down all, yeah. all and we also knocked down Paladins a whole tier. But yeah, we can see the chat ready to pump it up. The question is, who is going to be able to pump it up in this matchup? These are two players that have completely overperformed in their matchups. Absolutely. The All Seeing Eye, somebody that a lot of you didn't know until today, and uh, you know you, you might have even just blinked when you saw his name, not thought too much of it. But ultimately, now he has been able to well, get I, all the way. I, I, I thought he was a warlock. I mean, I had no idea who this guy was, right? He comes in here and he's in, you know, like one of the finalist matches. 
I mean, mean he's, he's done amazing. He's not a warlock. If you're a warlock fan at this point, you're either pressing one to summon those warlocks back or you're pressing F to pay your respects. Those guys are no longer with us. It all comes down to healing stat and the all seeing eye moving forward in this best of one. But we talk about healing stat matchups as well. We just saw him against a hunter, not even break a sweat. He looked so fantastic. Zero gets caught in his own trap and allows healing stat to go against this new legend that's forming from the beta. Okay, let's make this happen. All right. Um, how's our... Uh, how's our what? Uh, people were saying F and Chad. Is... No, I, that's, I, I said I had a... Oh, really? I had a, I oh. said, I said, because uh, there are no warlocks left, I said you could either press oh, one to summon okay, them back okay, or press okay, F to pay their respect. Okay, I, <laughs> I got it now. All right. Never mind. Okay, let's make this happen. Here we go. All seeing eye versus healing style. Let's do it. I just drew my face. Alrighty. Did I get it? Yeah, pretty much. It should be ready to go any second now. Actually, all right, let's go. Mustache. Really? Should I put it back? It's all right. Yeah. Should I draw it back? Why not? Uh, we'll, we'll let chat decide. We're going to let this matchup go through. Who is going to be able to take it? Is it going to be the all seeing eye or healing set? We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. All right. I'm ready whenever. Uh, are they, are they, uh, looks like they're pretty much good to go. Uh, as soon as they're ready, they'll go ahead and throw down the dual flag and we'll make this happen. This is actually one of the matchups that I've been looking forward to. Like all of Adrian's matchups, all the healing sets at matchups, I've been really excited to see just because they're so much different than a lot of the other things that we've been kind of, uh, used to expect. Okay. There's the dual flag. It's gone down. Let's make this happen. Let's see what's going to happen. Here we go. Dual getting started here. Once he clicks the button. Yeah. Anticipation building. All right. Let's go. And here we go. Immediately buffs himself up, uh, puts on the shield, and uh, let's go. Polymorph immediately goes out. That's something that we could all pretty much expect was going to happen. And then we have the Frost Bolts go out. And now Healing Stat is just basically trying to keep himself alive here. And then maybe doing, uh, let's see what's going to happen here. Keeping the dots on him and moving towards All Seeing Eye, maybe for a fear. I'm assuming this is probably a fear. And then he blinks away from the fear, obviously, hits him with the Mind Blast, and he blocks the Mind Blast. Okay, I didn't expect that at all. Hits him with the iron grenade on top of that. Stuns him with the iron grenade. Hits him with another frostbolt on top of a fire blast. Healing set is almost dead already, and he needs to keep himself up. Here we go. All seeing eye might actually be about to win this. And then he hits him with a 415 crit. Uh-oh, this is not looking good for him. Dude, all seeing eye is a freak of nature. This guy is absolutely insane. He has looked so good. Keep in mind that it took Sidu hitting him for like 600 back-to-back -back crits to be able to even yeah. knock this guy down to the lower side of the bracket. Now he is healing set with almost no mana. He just can't let him reset here. Healing set going to be trying to go for that reset. He's going in for the drink. Yep. Where is all seeing eye? He's going to be able to get the poly. Deny the mana. Only one tick even goes off. Healing set with 800 mana to work with. It looks like he is going to be sent out this of this tournament. This is not looking good for healing stat at all. Obviously, both of them are basically drinking back up. They're, I guess, agreeing to reset, which I don't know if that's a good decision for All-Seeing Eye because he's obviously used both of his blocks, I'm pretty sure. So basically, he must be really confident being able to win this. And he's keeping him CC'd with obviously rank one Frostbolt running out, obviously regening mana slowly. And by the time the healing stat probably gets to him, he's going to be almost full health and full mana here. So this is going to be basically a reset entirely. And uh, healing stat though, at the same time, isn't he still at half mana? Uh, yeah, uh, I don't he, know if this it, is going to happen. It's not. It's not a full reset, right? But yeah, I ultimately, I felt like kind of the same way that you you did. Yeah. Like, why not just close the jaws of life? It seemed like we saw the all seeing eye in such a dominating place, but he's just flexing how much of a dominant place that is. He gets yep. a full tank of gas. Now he's starting to crit. 615. 615. Okay. Uh, I don't know if healing stat can heal through this or not. And he does resist the bomb. That is very very good for healing stat. Obviously doing the greater heals, keeping his mana up as much as possible, doing whatever he can. I don't know if this is even going to be possible for healing set. He is really, really low, but he does get that heal off. He still has 500 mana left. Uh, all seeing eye is getting pretty low on mana too. This could be what's happened with almost a lot of these other games where healing set, it looks like he's out and then he comes right back and he get, keeps all seeing eye in combat again. And then basically, uh, let's see, we got another rank one Frostbolt, and all seeing eyes got maybe a little bit less than a thousand mana here. But healing stats got probably a little bit less than 500. That's not good at all. Okay, let's see what this is going to be. 
And so all seeing eye right now, I think it's just really waiting for that perfect opportunity to be able to close this out completely. Uh, as you guys can see already, that he does have the potential to, if all of the stars align, completely end healing stat entirely. And I think he's just waiting for that to happen. I, I'm still surprised about the reset, right? I yeah. think that the reset is a relatively surprising thing, but all seeing eye really seems to know these matchups just so well. Yeah, he does. Like I've I've been so impressed by him. And once again, we're and gonna that see damage right there. I mean, that damage is like three or four crits right there in a row, even with the uh frost nova crit at the same time. He's down to five health and then he finishes it off. All seeing eye wins with a four hundred and I believe forty-six crits. All right, let's Okay, get into it's it. already in. All right, we're right starting off. Polymorph going out. CDU obviously was able to uh, just ooh. knock him to the Shadow Look Realm. That, Absolute yeah. darkness. And now we are going to see that Shaman bringing the fire back to the sun. We are allowed to witness the greatness of CDU yet again. Polly going to be getting off, not even blinking in the face of that overwhelming light. Ben Ruki is going to be able to get not only the blink, but the sheep. And this gives him a huge oh, he's chance. He's dropping to open the up. big one. He's dropping the big one. We saw this at the beginning. Let's see what he's going to do. Obviously, Root Sidu there. He got very lucky. He goes for the melee on the grounding totem. Sidu responding by using Chain Lightning, trying to break through that shield. Benruki still at 100%, staying at max range so he can outrange the totem right there, keeping Sidu kited, trying to get those Chain Lightnings, interrupting that, trying to kill the grounding totem, trying to first aid. He actually did pretty much heal all the way up to full health, pretty much negating any sort of advantage Sidu would have had, or sorry, Benruki would have had after that entire go. Benruki at half mana I, this is not looking good for rookie already okay let's see how this is going to go and I also do want to bring up the fact that rookie has been able to play c a lot closer than the other mages have but one of the very cool dynamics about the way that we see c needing to play even though he is playing elemental shaman he still wants to be as close to ven as possible because ven has so many spacing tools and now he also does have some grips into c dude is going to use that cover of the grounding tone to get off what the biggest chain i've ever seen he's gonna pull out the what block. was that oh my god three per uh, that was insane Oh, and he hits him with the grenade from that far away. Oh my, that was, it took, it took been rookie to what? What was that, 1% health, basically? That's ridiculous. Okay, he's chasing down Benruki. Benruki is just trying to make range. Obviously, he went right there. Oh, he went for the charge as well with the uh, the the net toy. And then he goes for another chain lightning and maybe a lightning bolt, but he wasn't really quite able to do it. Healing himself up, Benruki is trying to get mana, trying to recover, trying to reset as much as absolutely possible. And this is also why you see Sidu trying to play so close to Ben. Oh, because he has, it's easier for Sidu to get soft resets. It's easier yes. for him to get these heals off. If he's on top of Ven right now, he can actually just impregnate him with that yes. chain lightning. We've already seen just how potent that is in this tournament. Ven now going to be getting that drink. They're see, both just full resetting. They're yep. getting full mana, full health. This is, for all intents and purposes, a complete new duel. Uh, okay. Well, not almost, a complete new duel. Be, be, right? because I, they, they did have yeah, to use block, right? Exactly. Uh, ben Ruki had to use block. And Say CD favorite CD I, now. So a CD also used Elemental Overlord, as far as I know, right? That's the guaranteed crit thing. Uh, so, uh, I, I, yeah, I, I think that when you, when you look at the power of the Ice Block and pre-Ice yeah. Blocking those Chain Lightnings, you do now put Ven Ruki in, in a situation there where he hasn't used the second one yet, but it's getting a little bit hairy. Yeah, this is not looking good. And also, like, again, we're not really waiting a lot of time between these two duels. So if you use one at this point, it might not even be up for the second duel. Okay, here we go. There we go. Ven Ruki's going for another. Uh, he's trying to get more mana. And Sidu is just trying to run him down right here. Sidu is trying to run. Oh, with a 635 critical strike chain lightning. Hitting him with the absorb there. Renuki is just running all the way over again, trying to kite Sidu out as much as possible. And he's going to probably get right on the edge of that dueling area. He's got five seconds to go back in. I don't know if he's going to be able to get in. Let's find out. Two seconds once. Oh, just barely. And uh, Renuki is just kiting Sidu back and forth. And also grounding does go down there. I think Ven does pick it off nice and quick, but Ooh. he might not have time to reset. We might actually see Sidu able to close this in time. Sidu's going down on the there drink. on his mount. He's ready. He is out for blood. Okay, here we go. Warchief riding in on his wolf, yep. looking for the chain lightning. And there we wow. go, 617. Can he finish with the shot? Lightning bolt comes through. Is it's going to be a big absorb. Is this going to be a Vinruki at 19% health? Sidu just needs one big attack, but Sidu is also sheep. This is not looking good for Vinruki, uh, Vin but also Sidu. 
it looks like Ben Rookie's being able to reset this regularly. I can. I mean, he's resetting this very, very regularly. He's just waiting for that opportunity. I think this is going to be just the same as our first match that we saw at the beginning. Uh, ben Rookie waiting for that opportunity for somebody to make a mistake, make a mistake, and for him to have the possibility to just kill him. You can feel this ting through the screen. It's only going to be 491 this time, but it is oh going to be enough. God, is he going to be able to dude. finish him off? That, lightning oh, bolt, that's what it. Was that? The lightning bolt in the air. Okay, let's see what we can do. Okay, obviously hit him with a bomb. Ben Ruki makes make sure he kills the grounding totem. C2 is basically just sitting right on top of him. I don't know how this is gonna go. C2 is just casting again, doing so much damage. Like these shamans are so durable. Like that's what I haven't really noticed. It's just how oh man. And he blocked, he blocked the chain blocked. lightning. There Beautiful. it is, dude. Beautiful. There he's, it is. He's hitting them pretty much every time. Yep. And you know, we really did start to see that coming out with the all-seeing eye. There's the grounding totem. This is gonna yep. buy Sidu some time to get aggressive. Here comes the chain lightning, but a polymorph. We are going to see not even batching there. A polymorph Ooh. going to keep Ven Ruki alive. He needs yep. to get some mana here. He channels a bandage to keep oh. himself healthy. He's already over 91% as well. Okay, all right. He's, He's going now, and you in. might even see it later on in the yep. tournament. He's going to go for another poly. Sidu not even going okay. to be allowed to play his character. Sidu's pretty well on mana, too. Uh, he, Venruki could maybe commit to this if he gets lucky. Sidu see loves to chill in ghost wolf form. This is not the animal that yep. he likes to sit in at all. Tries to get close. He's going to get hit with that Nova. Venruki going to oh, trade man, out a cone of cold as well. That, that frostbite was really, really lucky. Venruki kills that grounding totem. He's keeping range. He's staying away from Sidu, making sure he doesn't get hit by those melee attacks. And, oh, Sidu almost got over to him. Venruki's just sitting there waiting for a... Oh, he hit him with a bomb. Was that the big one right there? And there was a resist off that. Oh, man. Sidu is that... Wait, Sidu... Is Sidu about to lose? Yeah. Is Sidu about to lose? Yeah. Oh, my God. And then he misses the bomb. He misses the bomb. No, he got the grenade. Wait, did he? Yes, I don't he got think the he grenade. Did. No, he didn't get the grenade. Sidu won. So that's what you like to call a triple wind fury proc at the last second. Yeah, show us the logs. Yeah, we want to see the log. Let's see it. Okay, here we go. Look at that right there. See, that's what I just said, man. The triple wind fury, right? I, I mean, that was just... Oh, man. All right, let's do it. Wait, are they, oh, they're fighting now. They're fighting now. Okay, let's go. All right, so this is basically just the very beginning of the duel. We're seeing this happen exactly the same as it happened before. Obviously, Venruki is killing the Searing Totem, getting max range. Sidu is already sheeped. Venruki, we've seen this happen before, and he's sitting down there. Yep. I think that he's putting Slow Fall on to maybe make sure that he doesn't get his other major important debuffs purged off. Very, very one. smart as well. Dropping the big one on Sidu, keeping him rooted in place, killing the Grounding Totem right there. Another Searing Totem. Venruki is moving away from the Searing Totem, so he doesn't have to worry about killing it. Sidu starts casting Lightning Bolt, and then another Iron Grenade. Is Venruki going to be able to get away from it? He resists the iron grenade. Sidu is already healing up at first aid. And then, oh man, he resisted that and he kept the cast up. That is very, very lucky for Sidu right there. And then lightning bolts are going off on Venruki. Venruki is going off right over to the edge there. This is not good. Now, when you see he still has the protection of that grounding totem, we expect a chain yeah. lightning. Is the block going to come out? We oh, see a man. big fat absorb. Well played that was there a by big absorb. I'm, a, I'm amazed that wasn't more damage. Okay, there's another chain lightning on top of that, hitting him with the 498 with all okay, the other one was resisted that is not good bad rng for Sidu, but sometimes that's the way it goes then rookie obviously uh you know it's just eating back up and in otherwise rng free yep. game sometimes you win sometimes you lose that's right i mean hey he won the last duel because of rng and sometimes you lose because of rng it doesn't even look like he's necessarily going to lose when you look when he is safely inside of that polymorph yep. resets don't necessarily guarantee ben rookie wins over time like they do in other matchups the second that chuck gets out of this once again he is a threat he is going to have this grounding totem here. He gets nice and close as oh, well. Oh, man. Okay, that was with the netomatic. Sidu is obviously rooted there in place, trying to hit him with the chain lightning, and he gets him with it and the bomb on top of that. Now, Venruki is still going to be able to get away because that netomatic lasts for a very, very long time. Venruki is just trying to make some distance, and he's going to sit down, eat and drink, and this is going to be, once again, another reset. So, again, if Sidu wins this match, he goes on to the grand finals. There we go, getting onto his wolf. Gonna try to close that space just a little bit. We've seen him use this mount before. Ven wants to have as much okay. space as possible. Now he's gonna have a nice frostbolt to slow up Sidu even more. Sidu drops the grounding, already going to be out of the equation as he tries to get some of these lightning bolts onto Ven. It's gonna be another poly. You can see Chuck just goes, okay, I'm taking my hand off the yep. keyboard. Ven's gonna that's do what he's is. gonna do. Yep, that's the way it goes. I mean, honestly, Sidu's a pretty much full mana. Ven's gonna do whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, honestly, it, it, it nothing has really changed here.
There have been no real major cooldowns exchanged. I don't think we've seen a block. He didn't even we, need to pre-block yet. Yeah, we haven't even need to see a block. Uh, the only thing maybe is elemental overload. Everything else besides that is just pretty much standard rotational abilities. So this might take a little bit longer, and that's just fine. But the thing is, Sidu is going to be able to get mana a lot faster than Manuki is. And so that might give Sidu a little bit of an advantage here. Yeah, and this is this is the way that Ven Ruki can win. I, I yep. see people in chat right now. Uh, everybody's like kind of asking why he is playing so defensively. He needs to respect everything that is yep. getting thrown at him. These chain lightnings are so massive. Once again, Chuck going to try to close that space, coming out swinging. Oh, Ven still going to be slow with this. By time he's going to try to get a poly oh, here, man. and he, he gets, gets off. Stunned. Yeah, that is just that is the worst timing that you can possibly have. And like that's just the way that it goes. Oh, Even man. without spell batching, it would have happened. The, Ven was waiting for yep. Polly. That, that was why the timing yep. was the way that was. He basically says, okay, you have the stun. That's a go for you. I'm going to trade, right. keep the Polly, mitigate that go that okay. you're going to have. And now he creates one, one of his Here own. Here we go. The Here's the big one. Let's see it. And then he immediately hits him with the Frost Bolt. Google, back over to Sea Dew. Google, doing a how lot hard does Wintry hit? Immediately hitting him with, the, oh, wow. The, the Cone of Cold immediately stopped that cast as well. Sea Dew is getting very, very low on health. Dean Rookie is getting very low on mana, too. And Sea Dew is getting very low. If Vinruki gets this cast off, this could be bad for Sea Dew. Let's see what's going to happen. Grounding Totem is up. Vinruki is at full health, and so is Sea Dew. It seems like this has been basically not. Oh, wow. That's a Wind Fury right there. Holy shit. There's chain a light. Chain Light. Oh my god, it goes through the block! No, it, ben has to get out of the block. All Chuck needs to do here oh is connect. Oh my god. Is There's that a lightning bolt. That, that's a level one lightning bolt. He's got, what, 17 health, dude. 17. He's stuck in the poly. Oh he can't get god, over dude. there, dude. He's stuck grazing as a farm animal. Ven Rookie's oh gonna get no. away to reset. Sidu doesn't even have that much mana to work with. After that, it, see, it still is one of okay. those things that you expect to be an inevitable. The chain lightning gets through, which you don't expect when in Ven Rookie's arsenal he has the ice block. I know that we can make memes about down goes Ven Rookie, but not here, not on this stage. He's not going to miss the opportunity to stay safe in the shelter of that immunity. Now Chuck trying to close once again. Is he going to have that? grounding totem to open up the way to get a go on Venruki. Uh, it looks like he is. Obviously, Venruki is just trying to navigate around that tree, avoiding that searing totem, and then basically just trying to keep max range on Sidu, sheeps him again. I think at this point, Venruki is just looking for an opportunity to fully reset the fight again, the same way that he was able to before. Now, the problem with that, I don't know, man. Like, whenever you keep trying to go for these full resets, it seems like one of these opportunities, Sidu is going to get a lucky crit, and then it's going to be over. And like, I don't know if this is really the play or not. But Also, who, who, uh, who who has had reasonable goes against Sidu as a mage so far? It's only been Ben Ruki, and it's because yeah. he's also finding goes when Chuck is off of his flow. Like there's yes. an ebb and flow to every matchup. Absolutely. And in this one, if he's able to get rid of few a few of the trades that Chuck is making frequently with the grounding totem then can rely on the big goes and even the big yep. one to make an opportunity for himself. That could actually be a victory. Now, once again, Ven isn't going to have full mana, but he has enough oh, to he, actually get through the health. He's down a good 30% or so, and Sidu is full health, full mana. Ven Ruki's already used one block. Now, the thing is, I'm pretty sure Ven probably has Evocation up by now, which is a big positive for him. Uh, so let's see how this is going to go. Okay, immediately Ven Ruki is getting... Uh, oh, he's using everything right there. He's, oh, he's just going to sit. I mean, he should. Uh, he, yeah, he that's should. a smart thing. Uh, uh, like, what are you? Are, are you okay. going to beat Chain Lightning with your wand? Like, no, hell no. No, I, I, I'm pretty sure after about two hours of watching these matches, I would say no. Yep, I think that's one, th one thing that we definitely learned. Uh, nice really Nova coming out here. But I, I think he's really just waiting for an opportunity to be able to just basically get lucky and kill Sidu in this. Well, he and it also... could absolutely happen here. Five sixty-one right there, casting Healing Wave. He rooted him in place. That means there's a higher crit chance. This could be it right here. This could be massive damage. Let's see. Oh, I didn't crit. That's I not good at all. Sidu just keeps healing himself as much as possible. Another grounding totem is down. That is not good for Venruki. Venruki still have 20% more mana. Sidu drops the Searing Totem. Venruki trying to outrange it. Sidu dropping the Lightning Bolts. I don't know if Venruki's going to... I don't even think Sidu's going to have enough mana to even kill Venruki. He's going to have to rely on uh, on Wind Fury procs here. Let's see what's going to happen. Then actually turn this into a War of Attrition. It, it all is. of a sudden, there, this there, is coming there, down there, to there it is right there. See, that's what I was saying. There's the Wind Fury right there. There's the bomb, and there's the end of the match. Sidu moves on to the grand finals. So, Sidu, good talking to you again. Uh, I mean, obviously, everybody knows your story. You and Venruki grew up childhood best friends. Separated, you moved to a new school. 
and you guys didn't know about each other, you guys didn't know what was going on in your lives for over 20 years, and then turns out you guys both become World of Warcraft professionals and are reunited through the game, through method. Venruki takes the win from you in the Horde tournament a few weeks ago, and now you're back, you're getting your revenge. How does it feel? I mean, it feels good. Like, I don't I don't have an, a personal vendetta against Van, but, you know, when I lost that duel to a mage in a 30 duel tournament, I obviously kind of went back to the drawing board and said, if I can't beat mages, I'm not going to win these tournaments. So that's when I just said, I got I to gotta do elemental. Why, why do I want to chase a mage when I get to shoot him for, you know, thousands of damage 40 yards away? It just makes more sense. Very good, very good. I think I think that strategy, you essentially playing anti-meta at level 40, was a really good way of looking at this tournament. Thank you. It's looking Why does nice he out. laugh after every interview? Like, what is <laughs> The victor uh. goes the spoils. Enjoy, c -Doo. Yeah, enjoy that. Thank you, bro. Thank you. All right, we'll see you later. It's getting kind of hot in here. Okay, here we go. Duel starting. Let's make this happen. Here we go. All seeing eye versus black wizard. Let's go. They both immediately open up. Look at this. They're trading. Uh, they immediately open up with rank one frost bolts. He stops the uh, the cast right there with a uh, a bomb right there. Uh, Zico blinks right on top of him, hits him with a grenade, and this is going right down to it. All seeing eye looks like he's already under half health. This is not looking good for him at all. Black wizard is just he's just arcane explosioning him to death. Uh, I don't know how this is going to go. He's going to maybe go for the polymorph. He gets the polymorph off. That is very, very good for Black Wizard. Oh, though, he just trinkets right out of it. All-Seeing Eye has 400 health left. I don't know if this is going to be enough for him to come through. And All-Seeing Eye is doing his best. He goes for a higher rank Frostbolt, but it's not really going to make a difference. Black Wizard is losing more health faster than All-Seeing Eye is. All-Seeing Eye at 200 health, 80 health, 80 health, and that is it. Black Wizard finishes it off, taking All-Seeing Eye out of the match. And now we go on. That we'll goes. tell you in one yeah. second. Uh, okay. This is going to be a three thousand dollar tournament. We'll talk Absolutely. about what that split is, but you got to watch this matchup first. All the attention is going to be here as we see Van Rookie yep. get a solid opening here on to the Black Lizard. Big crit wow, coming taking through. him all the way down to 25, 30 percent health, almost zero percent oh. health. Van Rookie almost hundred owing him, and Black Lizard just barely gets. Oh my God, he trinkets out, and Black Lizard blocks. The oh, this is insane. Okay, here we go. I don't know. I think this could be over already. Let's see what's going to happen. Vinruki just had such a strong opener. This is insane. Block it, block it. Uh, yes, he blocks, blocks it. it oh, my God. And he goes for He's the next polymorph. It is only three, two seconds left. This could be the fastest mage duel that we have ever seen. Here we go. Vin's out of mana. Yeah, uh, let's see. Who's, is, is ben Rookie's out of mana? He's very low on mana here. Oh, actually, sorry. I was looking at a little bit of a weird angle. Okay, he should have go. enough to take down Zico if he can close yeah, this let's space see what's right gonna now. what's going to happen here. Oh my god, this is really, really close. Going Ice through the evocation. Going. Okay, evocation, I see that. Interesting. Oh, he's going to poly that? Okay. Oh, that did not quite go off. 20% health. Black Wizard sitting there at 20% health. Oh, he blocked that cast. They're just going all out right here. Ben Rookie immediately first dating. This is not looking good for Black Wizard. This is looking very, very, very bad. He's already used both of his blocks. Ben Rookie is just casting on him, absorbing with the ice barrier. He's already going into the dueling forfeit area. He's got to move back in. Iron Grenade is going out. He's going to try to get the Polymorph out, and the Polymorph does go out. That's good. Now, this could be potentially an opportunity for Zico to completely reset this. Let's see what's going to be. Another happening. block. He cold snapped the block, saying completely aggressive here, but another poly. Oh, my God. He's going to have to sit this one. Okay, and then he's, yeah, he's going to sit this one, but it's only half time. So uh, Zico's going to be able to get a little bit more mana. And then, oh, he gets the frost. Oh, there we go. He blinks right out of it. He goes to the third polymorph, and it doesn't really quite go off. And then, oh, there we go. He spakes that again. And then, here we go. Oh, man. I'm actually a. Dude, oh, he is, he is, is, oh my god, Zico's not got good. nothing left, that scorching not to try good. to close this He's one out. He's trying to use fire, fire barrier just to stay alive. He's using iron grenade, gonna hopefully stun Benruki. The stun goes off. Zico has nothing. He's got no health, no mana, no blocks, and Benruki is just finishing him off with rank one frost bolts. This is it. The big frost bolt is coming. The time is now. And oh, Benruki does get polymorph. Ben Zico, Evo. Zico wow. is staying alive. He will not stop. Okay, let's go. There's this reset potential here. Yep, this could actually be reset potential. And Zico is actually casting Frostbolts on Venruki right now. 
Okay, let's see what's going to happen. Keep in mind, Ven has no defensive utility left yep. because he used it to stay aggressive here. Seiko doesn't Absolutely. get the full reset. Only 25% life. Now oh, he's going to be completely out of mana, and this should be Venruki's chance to close it. It's a wand battle. They're oh crossing wands. Oh, my. No, dude. No. And then he goes for the heal right there. Venruki's at 20%. The crit. Zico's the crit. Port. Oh. Then Rookie takes him down, and he does it with sheer wow. aggression. And you gotta give it up to Ben Rookie. What a duel! And there, I, hey, hey, can you wait until after the interview? Oh, Jesus Christ! Unbelievable! It's, it's a, disgusting. It's a, this is it's a Christian. It's unbelievable. It's a Christian tournament. I'm saving myself for marriage. Okay. Why okay. are you such a Chad, so, Elliot? Uh, anyway, as we were saying, Ben Rookie, a chance at redemption. Yes. A chance. To take it all twice. You won the this, Horde this, Dueling Tournament. Honestly, yeah, sorry, I'm just taking over the interview. Oh, well, you're is, just uh, excited. This is, yeah, this is a Remember grudge match. Remember when Botar did that to you? Yeah, this this is a grudge match. Um, this is, uh, yeah, there's a lot of bad blood between Sidu and I. Mm. Like, we're going to throw it all in the arena. And honestly, it's just, it's going to go down, dude. Mm. It's going to go down. Well, like I was telling Sidu, uh, we do know, everybody knows your guys' life story. You know, how you guys were best friends. You guys grew up together. You guys were in kindergarten, first few years of elementary school, and then you guys separated. You guys moved apart. You guys went to different schools, and you never heard from each other for 20 years before you found yep. out that you guys were both World of Warcraft professionals. Yep. So That sounds like the story to me. Mm -hmm. That sounds exactly what happened. I, as far as I know, that is 100% the truth. That is definitely not a fabrication that I just made up 20 minutes ago. Yeah. So it's really um, awesome to see you guys come together and your worlds separate, and then your worlds Collide. become one in Warcraft. Pretty amazing. Yeah, I do want to say, um, I do want to say, I want to give a huge shout out to Zico. I'm really happy that the duel went that way. Obviously, I got the win, but it could have gone either way. And I think, despite him play. having like, a, despite him having like a really bad start, it shows like how fucking insane he was. Because I don't think there's another mage that could have forced me to use literally every cooldown and almost win from the start he had. So. Honestly, just hats off to him, my fellow Baker. And also, yes. yeah, I'm ready for C2. It's going to be difficult, but I think, uh, I think we could possibly maybe win if some stuff goes our way. Yeah, I think uh, I think there's a lot of stuff going a lot of ways right now. So uh, I think it's uh, time to end this interview, and uh, we'll get back to it. Ben Ruki getting full mana here. Flag already down the second that they are ready. They're going to accept and expect to see Sidu do what he does yet again. He really wants to avoid that early polymorph. That, that's kind of yep. the big thing. If he can get the strong opener before the poly comes out, it's really good looking for him. Okay, immediately Vinruki opens up with the rank one frost bolt. Sidu moves in, gets an earth shock on there. Vinruki roots him, moves away, gets obviously the grounding totem out, kills the grounding totem immediately. Then we have a polymorph going into there. Vinruki is doing exactly what he wants to do right now. He has already got Sidu in the early polymorph. He's sitting down to get full mana and make sure he's able to fully commit on actually winning this game. And he goes ahead and repollies him and drops the big one on him. This is going to be a lot of damage on Sidu right here. Hitting him with a cone of cold on top of that. Frost Nova on top of that. Scorch on top of that. Sidu is taking a lot of damage right now. And then there's a grounding to him going out immediately when that when it went down as soon as it fast. I, 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 it's been a long time. Let's go, Rich. Hey, ultimately, yep. it's not easy to speak when you're getting lightning and frost yep. chucked at your face as both of these players in such a difficult situation. But then Ruki is going to be once again somebody that can see into the future. He knows that Sidu's going for that chain lightning and he gets a beautiful pre-block off. Now he's going to catch him in the Nova as well. Create a little bit of distance, which does favor Ben Ruki, even though they are both range. Sidu relies on being close, but wow. that's going to be a chain lightning for 632. And a 515. Oh my god. This could be it. Benruki is running away for oh his life and then he finishes off the duel. Sidu finishes it off with a triple crit, a chain lightning crit, a lightning bolt crit and an earth shock to finish off the first game in the grand series in favor of Sidu. All right, the f the second duel is happening right now. Dueling is going off and all right, opening up again with the rank one frostball doing exactly the same thing as they were doing before. Sidu hitting him with the earth shock, getting back in range. Benruki rooting him with frost nova. Benruki getting higher, uh, higher range away. And then it looks like he's probably gonna, yep. 
this is a big indication here. The first chain lightning right is going to be a really big indication. This is a very, very good yep. poly. This is a much better start for Venruki. The first chain lightning is going to be a very big indication for us. If Absolutely. we don't see Venruki in a place where he's just going to get a free absorb and he doesn't block, that means he's going for the extended play, looking a few series into the future. That poly actually gets grounded there. Oh that is huge God, for Cedu. He tries to close yeah, the space. Just, yeah, this is not looking good at all for Venruki. Searing Totem goes out. Venruki automatically re-kills re it. The big one is coming out. This is going to be a lot of damage on Sidu. He gets stunned. He immediately trinkets out of the stun. Venruki gets lucky with a Kona Cola proc for Frostbite, keeping Sidu in place. Venruki is trying to just make any range as possible. Slows him down with the Frost Shock. Hits him with an Iron Grenade. The grenade hits. He's hitting him with the Chain Lightning. There's the block right there. We knew it was going to happen. And then right after that, that's already one block used. Just that one ability, that one Chain Lightning. And then it still hits him from all the way across the map he hits him for 615 you've got the little dragonling chasing him down keeping venruki in combat venruki's going for the heal right now he's trying to get any sort of first aid as he can goes for a rank one frost bolt. One. it hits the go ahead oh, oh, oh no ultimately there he goes for and that other chain like it's just huge he's able to chunk him down yet again here comes the poly if he doesn't get this poly here he is in such this, a bad way yep, and ultimately they're gonna shock him too chain lightning oh, I, that's a grounding right there on that poly there's another cast going off 500, 515. He's got a frost shock, sorry, a flame shock on him. Okay, this is really right down to the wire. Okay, Venruki's using his uh, evocation. He's sitting down to drink. And he's already taking a lot of damage. See, do he's going to be able to maybe get a little bit of uh, of health and mana, but I don't know if it's really going to be enough to make the difference. That poly or that poly came in just in the nick of time too. If sure you did. don't get that poly there, Ven goes down to just about anything. See, do could have sneezed on him on that point, and it would have taken him down a peg. Ven finally does get that space. He goes to try to find better shores grabs a drink but Sidu now going to go on the hunt and already right. Ben Ruki used that evocate as well that's going to be one of the biggest resetting tools that he actually does have and now Sidu actually says hey it's been a full reset anyway yep. I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna what just let him yeah let's let's just drinks all around not even a big deal this and, rounds on Sidu okay lightning bolt immediately going off rank one lightning bolt and uh basically trading with a rank one frost bolt Earth shock right there. Sidu moving in to hit Venruki gets rooted, moves away. And uh, let's see what's that. Obviously, grounding totem went out immediately. Sidu gets sheeped again. And Venruki, I think at this point, is just waiting for that perfect opportunity. He's probably going to sit down and drink, I'm assuming. And uh, then just do as much damage as he possibly can. So Venruki has actually been successfully able to almost full reset this, minus his big cooldowns like Evocate and also the... Uh, uh, dies one. You know, th this is looking a lot more like we expected the games to play out. Ven has done such a good job at getting these resets. Sidu just like whipped j just a giant load of crit out and just slapped Venruki across the face with it last time. It, it was a crit on absolutely everything. You had a huge chain lightning for over 600 damage. After that, you had a huge lightning bolt, which came in nice and fast cast for over 500. And then he finished off with an instant to just delete him. Yep. He got completely vendored there, but Fen this time around, he doesn't tilt. He plays yeah. it nice and calm. He goes for these resets. And now Sidu isn't in as comfortable of a place that we've seen in the no, rest of the not. tournament. Uh, there's been a number of times where Sidu's actually been in kind of an awkward position here. Sidu's kind of low mana. Venruki's also low mana. And uh, Venruki, I think, is basically just waiting for the opportunity to see someone, see Venruki make a mistake. I mean, that's really all it comes down to. Until we're we see that, we're going to see Venruki run. And he's going to ultimately wait to pounce until yep. he has one of these big goes. We Absolutely. saw that actually with the big one before that. Yep. He, he has to wait to actually trade nothing into, like, if you overcommit and the grounding totem goes down, you put yourself in such a bad situation. Yes. So Elliot's going to go in and poke. He's going to try to get the grounding totem to go down. And then when the grounding totem is going down, you know that Chuck is looking to trade into you. And yep. then you can kind of back away. This is a That's huge a opener for him. That's a 618. That is not good for Venruki at all. Sidu is just moving in with those lucky crits. Venruki obviously goes right there. He's probably going to go for a polymorph right there. He moves out of it, and that's going to be a missed grenade. That is not good. And then another chain lightning. Venruki is on the edge. He is about to die. He's got 10% health. And then Sidu roots him, and he's going to finish it off right there. They are already back into the game. This is the final game right now. Hitting the uh, grounding totem. Sidu trying to interrupt the polymorph, trying to do whatever he can. He gets the, oh, he did get that cast off. At this point, guys, all the damage matters. Everything that you have matters. If Benruki actually gets a win here, this is going to be absolutely insane. He has to use everything that he possibly has because if he doesn't, that's it. That's the end of the entire tournament. Over so, eight hours of gameplay chat. This yep. could be the last game that grounding's going to go down. And I gotta ask you as this lightning bolt comes out, where are you, chat? Whoa! 
That is a Wind Fury into an Earth Shock crit. That is not good at all for Vinruki. Holy shit. Sidu is just sitting there at 100% health, but it's okay. Vinruki was able to recover with a Polymorph. That's very, very good for him. Vinruki moving back in, hitting him with the Cone of Cold. Sidu trying to cast a Chain Lightning. Oh, he blinked right through it to line of sight the cast. That is really good. Vinruki is just playing like a god trying to avoid these casts, but I don't know if that really was going to be worth it. Hits him with a double Lightning Bolt plus a, plus a uh, what was that? An Earth Shock. Hits him with a grenade, and then there you see the first block go out right there. That block, too. It's not a trade into that chain lightning, right? Yeah. Like this isn't even, Sidu hasn't broken a sweat and he's right on top of him now. Then Rookie's trying to create space. He doesn't have too many tools to do good. it. Chain this lightning getting revved up. He's gonna move forward and he's just gonna close oh, it out. That's, that's it, that's it, that's it. That's it. That's what it. the fuck is over? Sidu. Sidu claims the entire tournament. With Sidu, oh, he is the you winner. don't. Oh my God. Shamans are insane. With oh, seed, you, oh, you, you don't. You you just heard it from McConnell. Wow. What's up, yo? Dude, Dude how does it feel to take man. down Ven? Third place in the last tournament. This time, you're gonna take first. Uh, it feels good, man. I think I think Ven's a really phenomenal dueler. Uh, so obviously happy to beat him. Definitely feels like Ellie's got you know maybe a little bit of an edge in that matchup. So I'm pretty happy with my decision to go Ellie. I think I think I would have yeah. got obliterated as enhance. Um, you know, some people in this call actually thought I wouldn't make it past the first round. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's all good. Did I? Yeah, you did. See, oh, did, yeah. did you lose a single game? Uh, a single, a single duel? No. You didn't Wait, lose what? a single duel what? the entire tournament! The that's entire tournament, he didn't lose at all. Yeah, that's uh, pretty good. Just real quick, uh, I think we'd mention, guys, the, the attendees, the attendees today, thank you guys so much for joining us. We had hundreds of thousands of people out here in the crowd over on the aisle. So very, very exciting to see. Very good to see that. So thank you guys for attending. Uh, we didn't have any problems at all whatsoever, which was, again, great to see. No issues at all. <clears throat> First dueling tournament that we did. Very good. This would not have been possible Dude, this is good. This is good. This has gone so well, I think it goes without saying that it will not be the last one. Thank you guys so much for doing this, and I, I really couldn't have asked for a better tournament. Guys, uh, th this was pretty insane. It took a long time for us to plan out exactly how we were going to do this entire thing, right? And ultimately, all the players that came on such a short notice, we can't thank you enough. And the reason that Asmin actually handed the microphone over to me is because he wanted me to remind all of you that he actually is sponsoring a mount giveaway for the store mount in BFA. You can get your very own Slavarian, your very own Slavarian uh, uh, asparagus bushy tail right now. All you got to do is retweet the tweet on my Twitter and follow Asmongold. Also, one more time, I, I gotta say, we all love the store mount. And I think the microphone may have died. But ultimately, I don't know, I don't know. But I want to say big shout out to Espon. All of this worked because of him. Follow him on twitch.tv or twitch twitch.tv slash SFANTV. And then also, you can follow him on Instagram and help him find a wife.